From the Dice Abide Live Studios, it's Late Night War Games with your hosts, Adam and John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, for that fantastic introduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Late Night War Games. I'm your host, Adam, and with me, as always, the wisest of Ken's eyes, the call me Kenneth to my Walter the Wobot, John. Everything is fine. Just submit to my authority. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we are joined in our virtual studio by Judge Smiley himself, Isaac Garman. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm here. <laughs> Yay. Okay, well, it is fantastic to have you here, Isaac. Uh, gentlemen, what are you drinking tonight? Well, today I'm just drinking some white wine. Classy. Keeping it classy. White wine in the in the closet with the toilet paper. <sighs> Shh. It's fine. It's, it's an apocalypse. I can do what I want. Oh, man. John, take it away. Uh, I am I am just having some good old fashioned uh, boleta, which is black Chinese tea. Oh well, all right. I am the only one of the festive spirit. I am drinking this lovely. The, there's the bottle. Here we go. Waiting for Rogue to officially sponsor us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Rogue 2020 Santa's Private Reserve, which is a peppermint bark milk stout, mm. and Ooh. also large and very alcoholic. So. It will, uh, it will probably do the trick. Ten years in the ISO cues is what I hear so <laughs> for public drinking. All right, gentlemen. Well, uh, well cheers. Cheers. On bye. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, it's time to get this started. But first, the evening news. <laughs> well, it's almost to the end of November. Uh, if you are free and you can get a game in over TTS or some other safe method, uh, please go ahead and get a game in, take some uh, airborne deployment troops, let us know how it went. Again, the, the angle we're looking for here is um, AD has changed not just in the mechanics but also in uh, the context of N4 and the missions and the, the new order count cap at 15. So you just really want to hear how that's uh, changed your play style, if it has at all, or if things are just normal. So let us know how that went. Uh, and you can write in to bromanacademy.com with all the details and be entered to win either a blister or a Broman Academy patch. Um, if you're in the painting mood and you want to paint up a model with the stealth rule, some models lost the stealth rule, so do check army before you submit anything. Uh, send it in before the end of the year uh, to bromanacademy.com and be entered to win in some, some prizes as well. Uh, the, the winner uh, of the painting contest, as chosen by our judges, will also get the opportunity to have Chris over at Monstrous Makings design a 3D printed thingamajig, and uh, he'll 3D print it, and I will pay for him to mail it to your door. So that's pretty rad. What? Yeah. And he, and he really does an excellent job designing anything you ask him. It's true. So lately, he's actually put together, uh, what is that, the, the Yujang multi-HMG? So it's not just any multi-HMG, it's the multi-HMG that's made to be mounted on the Yan Ho. There you go. Ooh. And then an assortment of swords. Uh, and then I'm not sure what that glove is for. Okay, so the glove, I figured it out. Uh huh. It is an Oyora hand, but oh. it is actually also rigged as a 3D model, so you can pose the Oyora hand however you want mm. oh, oh. so you can make it a fist you can make it flipping someone off you could do any fun thing with that you could ever want to do with the hand of an oyori uh somebody apparently had a very specific desire that's pretty cool <laughs> um there's yeah also... there's also a yeah, variety of katanas yep the yujang fla uh, ford observer combi bit which is the yeah thing. i need some of those yep a pile of those. Yeah, <laughs> get on it, Dan. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, the, in, uh, in chat, Isaac, uh, we've got a question about what white wine you're drinking. I don't know. I think it's barefoot something. Oh, there you go. It's not really classy. Classy. <laughs> the classiest of wines. <laughs> it just came the in a bottle unknown that said vintage. White wine. It's so old and yeah. so fancy. We can't even. We can't even speak the name. It's just that cool. Well. Very good. Um, what else has happened? Oh, we got the ITS-12 document. That's pretty rad. That's, right? that's big. And we have a couple of that's changes to, to missions, but we have some new missions. So first one we can talk about is Mind Wipe, right? So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Wipe it. Mm -hmm. 
that's a it's a really fun scenario because you get to like you get to push buttons but then you also get to blow things up mm -hmm. yep so basically the deal is you have uh two consoles in the center right and then three servers in each deployment zone and by activating a console uh, you can roll a die and determine at random effectively which one of these servers is the one with the rogue AI in it, and then your job is to go blow it up. And the opponent does the same thing. Um, and then you can either blow it up the old-fashioned way with decharges or just your fist, um, or you can use your brain with uh, brain things. So you, you can nominate a sort of uh, the Uber hacker, which is kind of like the data tracker of the scenario, and only that uh, model it has to be a hacker uh, Evo hacking device plus a regular hacking device, not a killer hacker, um, and they get to uh, do it with their with their hacking device, which is kind of neat. So that was that was a cool a cool new scenario. Adam and I played it. We can talk about that in a minute. But there's also Panic Room, which is the other new scenario. So that's also pretty fun. Adam, you want to explain this guy? Yeah, actually, one thing I want to touch on that I really liked about Mind Wipe is that it really opens up the opportunity for custom scenarios in the future to use custom hacking programs for a hacker to to do something neat so yeah. i'm looking forward to what devious uh what devious things i can come up with for the road city raid 2021 but uh the other scenario which was formerly called biotech war room um and then what i may have dropped a line to uh coney to suggest it on behalf of uh pete that maybe we call this panic room instead um and voila it is now panic room i take some credit for facilitating that but <laughs> it's biotech 4 that grows every turn so a lot like the dante speak scenario mm -hmm. from the humble to regular it grows four inches a turn from all four sides which is super cool what it effectively means is that instead of half of the table being covered by a biotech 4 zone like normal uh, a full three quarters of the table ends up being covered Additionally, there are these four antennas that you can stand next to and be safe, but they can also be blown up. So right. maybe don't rely on them. Uh, both biotech formations at the end of turn three, everybody in the biotech four zone is just deleted. So there's no more, um, no more like strategically walking back into the biotech four zone on turn three through tag because it's not going to go down. Like it has to get out of the area. And then this one, you have to get a, I forgot the term they had for it. You have to get a lieutenant, an NCO, number two, or chain of command mm -hmm. in the room to score every turn. Essential personnel. Essential personnel. So you have to get, yeah, somebody one of those rules in that in that room, and that's going to hurt. Yeah. Um, so you, you get an additional point, basically. If you dominate it, you get it. But if you have at least one essential personnel, you still get points. So you don't have to dominate, but if your lieutenant's hanging out there, you still get some points, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, dominating is one point. Having the essential personnel in there is another point per turn. So that's six points right there. Uh, and then three points for securing at the end of the game plus the classified. Or three points for the end of the game. So that brings up to uh, nine. And then yeah, that classified. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, you know, we're going to play this with my US Ariadna, which will be a challenge because my only NCO is Van Zant or the Minuteman HMG. But... I've got a lot of flamethrowers. Well, you don't want to put your lieutenant in there? I mean, I probably, I probably will. <laughs> if I go second, I will. <laughs> I'll be in loss of lieutenant. Yeah. Mm. That sounds fine. What could just... possibly go wrong? Yeah. Just what's a little bit of death? No big deal. Hey, none of my guys outside the zone <laughs> are scoring any points anyways. This is true. So, yeah, it's basically the bio you know, biotech war zone plus the armory. I love it. There might be some headquarters troops in US ARF. Oh, I didn't catch that it also used They're headquarters troops. Oh, okay. That I think will uh I think will will help a bit. And I'm a little bit sad the tabletop shogun commented that, but not to my request for wine sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Characters also count, yeah. Oh snap. Okay, well yeah, I'll be fine then. Unknown Ranger is gonna do all the work. Yeah, uh, he is. And blackjacks. Oh wow! Their headquarters. They have to so. squeeze through the the door. I don't think they can because they're heavyweight. I don't. Does that not let them pass through half their wit? I'm not sure, but I think it's still. I think it's funny. 
I'm not yeah, sure if heavyweight's sick. still a thing. I just I just want to. Suck it. I don't remember seeing heavyweights. Uh, yeah, we need we need to we need to investigate. But heavyweight is not a thing. I got it right here. So he's gonna suck it in and squeeze that door. <laughs> <laughs> he's got nowhere left to suck in. <laughs> he's doing his best. He's doing his best. Uh, he'll like be going through sideways and just trying not to trigger the chest mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, the the new missions look like a lot of fun. Um, one thing I really liked for this season is they've gone through and kind of cleaned up a lot of the other missions. They've got rid of the data trackers. Um, so there's no more of that data tracker extra order. They've also added the coolest thing ever. It's like they read my mind. Uh, in seven missions, I think was the math. Maybe more than that. I can't remember now. Um, each player places two blast template size areas of saturation difficult terrain. Yeah. Specifically zero G, but I suspect that will be get house ruled at all tournaments to be whatever makes the most sense for the table. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, exactly. It's officially zero G, but it could be an orbital drop of some sort of weird device. Or the road for the Rose City raid, it will be uh, probably defined for every table. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that rule. I want it always, except on my uh, island table. Or the airplane table. The I mean, tables that have plenty of terrain as it is. Yeah, I figure right. I figure for tables that already have like ridiculous amounts of terrain, it's fine. I think this is just CB's way of getting people to actually use the terrain rules or making it part of the tournament system. Right. Um, so that's a, great, that's a great addition. Yeah, for sure. It was kind of funny. Tim it. and I were talking about it all last stream on Sunday, and I was like, yeah, I live in a meta with Adam, so this feels kind of light to me in terms of additional <laughs> yeah, terrain. <laughs> terrain light. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, this is all right. Sure, I guess if you just want to, you, know, if you want easy mode, <laughs> yeah, right." I I appreciate Heloise like introducing the world to what it's like to play near me. Yeah, um, you know, maybe maybe next season so, everyone so, else put down so four. Basically, playing near you is like gasping for air because you're in a localized decompression zone. That's what you're <laughs> saying. Much. Okay, I I think now I, take, else, I take your breath away. Everybody else <laughs> is recognizing is. how important multi-terrain is. Our train total now. Uh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, headquarters personnel and characters. So excellent. Yep, fans at Wild Bill, Unknown Ranger, Rosie, and Blackjacks. <laughs> <laughs> There's your list. <laughs> so that's that's lovely. Yeah, I'm also gonna have to come up with some special um, neoprene templates for that. I think that's one of my goals for the Rosie Raid 2021. Is uh, everyone will have their own templates for it. Nice. Oh, they're nice. That'll be good. Nathan, you came in late. We're talking about localized decompression and the ITS-12 doc. But anyways, yeah, no. So ITS-12 is fantastic, along with the, uh, you know, the new armies that have been added to uh, to Army. Like, it feels like N4 all over again. Yeah. <laughs> we had it for a month, and here's the game again. It's all new and fresh again. And yeah, so uh, I think we played a few games, John. Let's have Actually, a hobby yeah, first. I, Oh yeah, let's 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 skip the uh, let's not jump the gun. So for hobby, uh, I put together some more Eugene remotes because White Banner can get a hell of a lot of remotes. So that they can. I now have the proper combat bots, uh, two CR bots, two flash pulse bots, and then one missile, one Ford observer bot. So I'm in good shape finally with my Eugene remotes. <laughs> um. You already had these, though, really didn't you, right. for your Ikari? Well, I, I had them for my Ikari, but they're going to be based differently, John, and painted differently. Oh, all right. You are know, you... my Ikari ones are going to have, like, graffiti, and, and they're going to be all beaten up. And these are pristine, well-taken-care-of ones. I see. Defending There's the... no base toppers on these. What's going on? Uh, so I, I don't always base top everything. My white banner and my military orders are going to be on a kind of snowy tundra base. Ooh. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting, you know, painting everything eventually one day. Um, the white banner are going to be uh, white armor with like khaki fatigues. So mm -hmm. almost like a white on white feel. A lot like the rebel troopers in yeah. Empire mm -hmm. Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. But and then I'll, I'll probably mix in orange as a highlight color. Sure. Like squad markings and things like that to kind of tie it together with traditional Yujing, but like keep them very heavy winter. And then, okay, so I'm going to go a little bit crazy, right? So the the monks are all going to be in black. <laughs> okay. Right. 
Jinko Jink, is going to be in black. Um, so they're going to have this kind of like, I, I've not tried to do a Star Wars army, but it's going to look kind of like a Star Wars army. <laughs> like a, a very, it's okay. You know, it's all right. You, you can do it. A very, a very Sith element. Um, Next, you're going to tell no, me I you just, chopped all the heads off of your military orders and turned into the Mandalorians. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would never. Um, but I think it'll be really striking on the table is really why I did it. Mm-hmm. So or really why the why I'm planning to do it someday. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the reason why there's no base toppers here. I also was able to get my hands on this Vallejo uh, air air spray that, or uh, aerosol primer that they make. Uh-huh. And it is hands down the best aerosol primer I've ever used, period. I will be only buying that from now and forever. They have a really good selection of colors. This is actually my favorite color. It's not black. It is Panzer Gray, mm. which is a very, very, very dark gray. It's actually what I use to primer most of my models with my airbrush anyways. Mm. Um, and it's because it is dark enough to read black. If you looked at this on the table, you'd be like, oh, there's a black ship. You wouldn't, you wouldn't associate it with being a gray ship. But it is just light enough to let you shade it further. Mm. Right. So you can actually like shade the recesses and make it look like a proper, a proper deep black. I really, really like it. Um, and I mean, it is cra- It goes on really thin and really strong. So this obscured no detail whatsoever. You know, this is printed on um, Dan's very, very dialed in 3D printer. And there are extremely minimal mold lines that every other primer I've used is totally filled in fine. In this, they're still visible, which is annoying, but also like a testament to how clean of a coat that that goes on. So 10 out of 10, I will use that primer on everything. I've already been like, this is kind of like, I, I've got a couple of colors as a test. I also got a light gray that I'll use for the Zenith instead of white. Um, and then, yeah, it has a really fine spray pattern. So it, it shades really nicely just out of the can for a Zenith. And then, yeah, so now I'm shopping on colors. Like, okay, cool. Which red am I going to get for my steel phalanx? Etc. Um, rad primer. I haven't been excited about primer in a long time. <laughs> Can't tell. <laughs> when, when it's done right, I mean, it makes a big difference. Well, that's the thing. Like, I, I've tried using everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just using the GW ones for so long because it was the one that was finding was the most consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, really, for me, that's, that's 100% what I want is consistency. Right. Um, and I'll spend a couple extra bucks on primer for my expensive models anyways. But this is incredible. I tried three different colors. All three of them had similar results. So, this is just so people know what you were talking about. This is the Vallejo rattle can primer. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in a, some really nice military colors, like like uh, U.S. military uh, fatigue colors. and Of course, it's British Vallejo. Colors. Yeah, exactly. But those colors are really fun to use, I think, for Infinity. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they kind of you kind of bring the saturation down a bit. Yeah. So I approve. Um, I also got Blood Bowl 2020. Woo! <laughs> um, I haven't had a chance to build anything yet, but from what I've read so far in the rules, you know, the all the rules were leaked anyways. Um, so we already knew what was coming. It's very good. The the new teams look great. I want to build those coaches. I'll probably have some build by next week. Nice. Yeah, John, did you uh, get any hobby in? I did. I uh, I got a new patch flag, I guess. Oh, welcome to the Tactical Patch Flag Club. Well, I, I had one already, but it was too small, and I ran out of space. So I got a bigger one, and now, as you can see, I've got plenty of space. So that was definitely the intent there. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. Some of you may recognize some of the patches on here. Um, the lack of organization drives me a little bit insane. Lack of what? Organization. Yeah. It's lined up nicely. That's all that counts. Like the two Drews ones are next to each other, so that's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it bothered me at first, but then I was like, you know what? It's fine. All I really care about is that the pattern is aligned, right? And this, this, their, their size similarly. This, this is sort of like why I don't listen to lyrics and songs. I'm just like <laughs> the melody line is fine. I don't care what you're saying, right? So, I guess it's the the way our brains work. Um, yeah. I mean, this is just a testament to how you look at Infinity as a whole, anyways, right? There it's we go. All, 
your army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that's, yeah. Let's let's go with that. It makes me sound much cooler <laughs> and inclusive. Um, speaking of which, here's here's a uh, here's a demonstration of that. So on the left, we have a uh, I have Lord Business modified to be a CSU with a gun briefcase, and he's reaching for more gun in his coat. And that's going to be for my NCA because it's an NCA base. And I've got the nice. unknown ranger uh, for my for my Ariadna. And then the uh, limited got, edition unknown ranger. Yes, thank you, Adam. Uh, and then uh, I've got a, a grief, grief, grief. I don't know what whatever it is. Operator from. I think uh, it's for my right. Yeah, I think so too. That's that's for my Toha. So that was actually a pretty fun model to put together. Um, it's a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's. it's it's easy to easy to put together and and not uh, a huge pain in the butt to to pin to the uh, base topper. So that was fun. Uh, and then I finally uh, got around to setting up uh, Pug Veronin because he was Smug Veronin <laughs> before, and now he's Pug Veronin, which I I really enjoy. <laughs> so uh, that, that I cannot claim credit for the Veronin idea. That is Than, um, aka Zagdag. Uh, who, uh, after he liquidated his tack, decided to give Ronan to me, uh, and he had because since you know back in those days, and I guess still now, Ronan spent most of his time prone on a rooftop. So why not, why not, why shouldn't he enjoy the comfort of a lawn chair? Right. Um, and I was oh, like, yeah. well, now that guard is a thing, clearly he needs some ferocious attack dogs, and so <laughs> I found a reaper sprue of adorable pugs. And that's that's gonna be my Ronan forever. That that one on the right makes me so happy. I know, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, the best. Lauren's gonna love that one. <laughs> it's mine. You can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the best. Oh man! Goodness gracious! So, uh, Isaac, have you got any hobby done lately? Mm, well, the only thing I've been working on is this bust that I've gotten from. Ooh. Oh, that's a cool one. And uh, Lucas Peacock. Yeah. Uh, Polish. No. Oh, it's, he's a really good sculptor. I can't remember uh, the name of his company. But uh, uh, every time he uh, he comes out with a sculpt, he, he hand sculpts them. None of these are 3D. That's awesome. Uh, he puts them up for a limited for a limited run, and then you get in for the order. If you get in, you're that's great. But He's such a good sculptor that it doesn't matter what's coming up. If you're interested in getting one of them, then uh, it's worth it. <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. Super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, excellent. Uh, with the with the hobby out of the way now, let's get to the games. Isaac, you had a game with, was it Starmada against? Yep, Starmada versus CHA. So, oh, the, the New Caledonia. Caledonia. Yeah, and uh, I, what I find interesting is that we had similar styles of lists. I mean, everything was basically. Um, uh, so this is for frontline, yeah. Yeah. So the concept for this one, because uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to have an all comers list. Uh, okay. And um, I was also expecting to play against uh, against Nathan or Joe Clubs. And he uh, he brings nomads, which means lots of hackers. So mm -hmm. I was thinking about uh, if we do a mission that requires specialists and hackers, then I wanted something that could basically pull back my tag in case he takes it over. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the plan was to throw pictures out to uh, basically give a, a, a repeater net to keep them safe and then have enough hackers in the list to basically be a threat to say if you come near me arrows are coming your way um and if so you can't like force your way into the zeta's uh cockpit and take it over and run away with it so that's what i didn't really want i, I yeah you it, don't want to deal with the nature mc turning around right and with climbing plus <laughs> you can literally go in yep. yeah yeah uh, but uh, against Jordan, uh, a lot of those hackers were not as, as uh, important. Um, we ended up playing uh, Frontline. We were trying, um, we started late, and uh, we didn't really want to do um, a lot of objective prep in uh, 
Tabletop Simulator. Uh, tabletop Simulator. Yeah, so sure. oh, we just said, right, let's let's just get some stuff like to do zone control and get practice in with Tabletop Simulator and try out these new these new armies. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty rough game. <laughs> <laughs> so really quickly, let's talk about your list. Um, your first group, you've got a, a regular Kappa, two hackers and two missiles, presumably in a defensive link yep. kind of setup. You've got your Zeta Lieutenant. So there's all the all the lieutenant right there. Yep. Uh, and all the, the points. <laughs> yeah, well, 77. It's actually it's not, a lot of points. It is, but it's a good chunk, yeah. I guess it is also by by N4 standards as well. Mm-hmm. Um and then a Cyber Ghost KHD. That'll round up your first group. Second group is Choking to chain of command, uh Psychop with MSV1 and multi marksman mm-hmm. and beta KHD. I assume that's another link. Yep. yep. And then Parvati, Vrangian, and a flashball spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's um the Psychops, Beta, and Parvati were yeah, that's a, the, it's a beta Harris with and Psychop and Parvati are wild cards. Yep. Ooh. And the idea was that that was the go get things done link. Uh, sure. And I mean, it's also pretty brutal. <laughs> did, you do, did you get to disguise Cho as something cheeky? Yeah. So uh, to be a threat, um, I decided to go with an Epsilon H and G. That way it, 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 it's, it feels like it's going to come out and just punch you in the face. So you want to stay away from it. And um, uh, if, if anybody did come near it, I have a, nanopulsor to help uh, give her some protection i think that was the the the, uh, the main takeaway is that nanopulsors are extremely effective <laughs> Against caledonia yes yeah oh no yeah. well okay so let's let's talk really quickly to what jordan's list was right so he had <clears throat> pardon the uh, volunteer rifle three volunteers of chain rifles the gray with hmg uh, that's a pretty traditional link. Mm-hmm. The Mormor NCO with C2. Yes. Another Marber with HMG and a gray. So I assume that's a Harris. Yep. Gross. Wallace for his lieutenant. McMurrow. That rounds out the first group. Second group, Yusha, Assassin, FO, Katarane, and 112 on bike. Yep. So he got first turn. That's interesting. Was rough because. Um, uh, I was uh, I was really hoping to, um, to basically pick away at some of his high or very scary things, or at least put him in a position where it would be difficult to do anything. Um, but uh, I was able to get my defensive link to cover two long fire lanes with the uh, missile launchers. So the the I had a missile launcher on top of. Two buildings on the bottom there, on the left and right, uh, encircled. And then this is late in the game, but I wanted to, to show where everything was positioned. And then his Harris was behind that crate on the left there, mm. and his core was on that uh, center green building. And then from that center green building, you could see down both fire lanes because of the elevation. Mm, okay. So, uh, what ended up happening was a lot of uh, firefights that didn't really amount to much, and then um, I was able to take out his. Uh, well, okay, so the, the the first thing he did, which was the probably the suckiest thing that I had to deal with, was Uxia came around the corner on the left there, circled around, and took out my. Um, uh, the the Kaida. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, I see this guy here. Yep. Yep. Out, yep. And then went into that building and took out the the Kappa one of the Kappa hackers. Okay. So that drops you down to a four man bonus. Right. But that was thankfully the end of his orders. Um, right. Because Uxia has a pretty shallow order pool. Right. Right. And yeah, I assume and you stripped orders from that second pool. No. Um. I wanted to take him away from his normal the other one because I knew that there was. McMurrow. Three strong attack piece pieces. The uh, the core is pretty brutal, and then the, the Harris and uh, McMurrow are mm-hmm. always really rough. So 
uh, what ended up happening was he ran out of orders, so he switched over to McMurrow. He went on the left side of that building a little ways and then kind of stopped because uh, I shot at him with a missile launcher and <laughs> and uh, got a shot off on him and I got one wound. So I was like, yes, victory. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> so so what was it like facing down those new mormers? There's a lot of uh, talk on them with well, the interwebs. This is where Jordan made a mistake. He He came out and he went... He tried to face off against the missile launcher on the left, and mm-hmm. he was just outside of good range. Oh. So it went from him being like, "Oh, this is gonna this is gonna really be scary," to, "Oh, I can I can handle this." And I rolled really hot, and he rolled really not good at all. And and he ended no. up clipping. I ended up clipping one of his mormers. So basically, in one exchange i took out two more <laughs> oh my god no. oh my god <laughs> missile launches are rough <laughs> yeah i uh. was i was honestly really rooting for you to nano bolster them <laughs> cute armor five blah. Right. <laughs> actually i think the only thing with with the nano pulser was the kaida and uh parvati and nothing uh, else that trooper has a has a two burst one and the psychop has a two burst one Oh yeah, sorry. I'm thinking of flash pulls. Sorry. Nope, yep. So, um, yeah, you could have with with Cho, the Psychop, the Beta Trooper, Parvati. Yep. Well, that comes later in the in the game. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay. All right. Tell us about the rest of the game. So uh, my turn. I ended up um, because the Gray ended up taking out the uh, most of the the missile launchers. So mm-hmm. my my core became basically a two man uh-huh. uh, core. And I was fine with that. I moved the Zeta and the Cyber uh, Cyber, Cyber Ghost. Ghost over into Group Two, uh-huh. and uh, I used all of those orders to move up the the Zeta. Um, I was able to draw a line because he scooted his um, his gray over. Uh, I was able to move forward without being attacked, and then hide behind one of those uh, cars to uh, get a line on and. First five is pretty rough, so I took him out. There you um, go. He, I dropped him unconscious, so that wasn't uh, terrible for him. But um, then I, I moved forward again, and uh, I was able to take out... Uh, what was the other thing? McMurrow? No, not McMurrow. Something else. I was in the middle. I, I left him there because um, I needed to, to focus on getting Mark Morrow out. So I moved um, the beta and uh, Pravati and the Psy, uh, Psychop over on the right side of that building mm-hmm. where McMurrow was. And I was able to um, double nano pulser him down because he decided to grenade me. And I was oh, like, yeah. well, there you go. Proud, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably live through this. And so uh, I'm hoping to, to get you out. So if he was going to dodge, I was going to shoot him with the uh some machine gun so that's a pretty good option yep and then so dropped mcmurrow there and then i moved forward um and uh moved the the psychop up so that he could look through the building he was he went up into the building yep um was able to look out so if, if anybody tried to come um around that building they'd have to basically face the psychop with a a multi uh, no, sorry, the uh, marksman rifle, which is really rough. Um, yep. And then I hid the uh, beta and Parvati behind a crate on that side of the building. And then with my last order, I'm like, I'm just going to get out of dodge. And uh, I was like, what am I going to do with this tag? And I was like, oh, it's got climbing plus. <laughs> Here's the building. I'm going to get on top of it. <laughs> and but that turned out to be uh, one of the most commanding spots in the entire board. Because yeah. you just you have cover. And you can see into the building in the middle. Right. You can see across into the building on the left. Oh, yeah, look at that. Down, down the, the uh, angle there yep. onto uh, Jordan's right side of the table. Mm-hmm. And down onto that uh, that center building with the core. So it, it ended up being a, a decisive move. And then uh, in Jordan's turn, he was trying to just recoup. Uh, get things back. He brought. He dropped the um, a cam uh, Katarin down down from a sniper perch. And as he was climbing down the 
the building, the Psyocop was able to see him and was able to uh, shoot at him. We had a fire exchange that didn't go well. And then um, we both whiffed. And then he got behind the cover and did it again and took him out. I was like, well, this is going to be rough. Uh, at that point, there was a few other things he was trying to do, but um, he ended up not having enough orders to make it work. Gotcha. He also moved He moved the um, one of his uh, SASs up into that building on the, on the left side. Yeah. And I was able to discover him with, with my uh, Ferengian. He was just looking right into the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the other side, I was able to, to, sh- to delay with the Zeta. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So like, we're just going to do, do this. Oh, no. <laughs> so he decided to dodge prone, which was a good call. Yeah, um, that's, not, that's not terrible. Uh, and then he also moved the gray into that middle building. He was trying to set up to be able to take that uh, that center if he could get rid of the um, the Zeta, and if not the center, make a dash to my deployment zone to get four points. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a good call. But um, what ended up happening is uh, I had two orders in the um, the pool with the with the Kappas, so I just basically moved them forward and was able to go from cover to shoot. At him with the, the combi rifle, and it was Not enough lucky. to take him out. Yeah. And then um, the the Beringian took out the SAS, and the uh, Zeta took out um, the one twelve. So couldn't he couldn't? Man, that's like back. most of the list, right? So we, right. So the warmers are down. Out. The gray is still up, right? I guess yep. the, the great died, yeah, right? To down, the and he was just he was going to move it up, move the one twelve over to uh, heal it, but he wasn't able to because the Zeta was there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I see, I see. That's when it, when you, he lost the one twelve. Yeah, got it. So then I moved the Beta and Parvati up, mm-hmm. and basically hugged that green uh, building mm-hmm. and took out the Cataran with uh, nanopulsers, and then went around that corner. And with my last order, I just lined up in the beta by himself uh, with the nanopulsers to to hit the entire core. Oh and my god! So he decided to um, <laughs> shoot at me with the uh, with one of the um, volunteers. Yeah, the the chain rifle one there on the on the left of that picture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other the other two. Or, sorry, the, the other three stayed in a core with Wallace. And dodged. Because he reformed around Wallace. And they, they dodged. And they were able to to basically get through all of that. They survived. And so I just left the beta there. And the he, other... <laughs> so the only thing he could move was sitting there right in front of a beta. So it, it didn't go well. <laughs> Goodness. So at that point, he pretty much lost everything because he was just trying to get into one of the zones and sure. yeah it, it was it didn't go well uh, ugly that's rough <laughs> yeah so oh, i learned that a... the bus is great <laughs> <laughs> and getting cover uh on top of a building is pretty nuts and uh burst two nanopulsers and burst three in a link is pretty gr- gross <laughs> that sounds pretty gross well, well done. Well done on your victory. So what was the final score there? It was 10-0. It was oh, wrong. no. <laughs> Sorry, Jordan. Yeah. Though, uh, to be fair, he's been smoking me for the last few months. So <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to have a, a victory finally. For most of COVID. Right. Oh, goodness. Well, cool. That'll give us uh, plenty to talk to when we get to talking about Starmada. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, John. We played the game. We did. We we masked up and played in the in the game garage. We so we played a game of my O twelve versus your steel uh, on your lovely island table, which yep, is incredibly yep. photogenic. <laughs> it looks so good. It it almost doesn't make me feel bad for having unpainted models on it. 
<laughs> it makes me feel really bad for having unpainted models. No, just don't, just don't look at the models. Look at the table. The table's all right, great. All right, all right. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, fine. I, I tried to hide as many of the models I could with, bam, crack. Right. So, I did, I did my part. I, hide your shame. Hide the shame. Exactly. Oh, oh man, yeah, it's 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 a beautiful table, Adam. Uh, and it's well, also you. a pain in the ass to play on because all of that blue is aquatic terrain, and there's a lot of it. And um, you can't climb any of these ridges because they're taller than S2. Uh, and basically, your only way up the table is on these very open and coverless bridges. So yeah, that's exciting. Well, Although I suppose now there's little little nubbins which you can claim cover on. And if you're taller, then you're still, but you're not taller than S2, so you're not. I don't know. It's it's I, a. It's I mean, a I'll clip off all those covers if people start claiming cover or those nib, those little nubbins. Right. But really, the thing is that they are higher ground than the ground below, so they do provide yes. cover. Yes, just for being true. up there. Right. But they don't if you're on the same level, which is real, real gross. Um, yeah. So it's it's a definitely a challenging table to play on. Neither of us were really expecting to play on it because we were just like, let's, like I arrived and you had we were tearing down your the table we played on the other week. And we're like, what if we yeah. play on the island table? And I was like, oh shit, my list is not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> At all. <laughs> I mean, I, I can honestly no, say neither was mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I went through a bunch of list iterations before this, right? You can read all about it on the post if you want. It took me a while. Isaac, thank you for your advice. I ended up going with um, with uh, the final one here. But we can talk about Adam's list first, and then I'll talk about my plan. Yeah, my list was, uh, I had a lot of fun. I mean, with Steel Phoenix being back in the game, um, I kind of felt like I needed to play them. Mm -hmm. They're such a fun army. I really enjoy them. So I start off with a, with a link that I'm pretty familiar with, right? It's the, the Myrmidon or Myrmidon link with Machion and Phoenix. Pretty straightforward. Power to two net rods. And now that net rods are guaranteed orders, I I love it. So they weren't going to be my main powerhouse, though. You know, I could easily dump some command tokens, throw models in there to boost them up with extra orders. But really, my plan was to power some of the, the more interesting individual pieces that Steel Phoenix gets. So group two was a TR bot, a pro bot, which is just the uh, the the Minesweeper bot. No, it's, it's not a Minesweeper bot anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's the deactivator bot. Yep. Oh, just the baggage bot. Yep. It's a cheap order. Um, <laughs> yep, two Flash Pulse bots, the Lambda or Lamed. Yeah. Uh, then Diomedes. Who is still uh, one of my favorite characters on all of Steel Phalanx? Uh, <laughs> like, but he's not shock immune, man. Well, he's got airborne deployment. Like, just don't oh, deploy yeah. him near shit with shock. Like, come on. So, I gave him the multi rifle profile strictly because I didn't have points for the uh, for the Mark Twelve, and I didn't want to drop an order. So, what are you gonna do? I took Andromeda. With the SMG not uh, not infiltrating, because I didn't want to overextend her and have her wiped out turn one, yep. since you can only attack the you can only attack the objective on uh, turn two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it also is like if she needs to walk backwards up the table to push the button in case of emergencies, like that sucks. So stuck with regular Andromeda, she's rad now. Uh, Scylla with Evo, which I did because I could. I was like, Evo's neat. It'll help me drop Diomedes. That'll be cool. Um, especially since I'm not taking Diomedes with the Mark 12, so I don't want to be stuck with his crap range bands. I mean, you also uh, buffed your TR bot, so that was relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, um, I'm just so used to Scylla being like the strictly offensive monster. Oh. Instead of being support wear who covered two of, two of the, the objectives of flamethrowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah. good. Which it's it's very good. Is she 41 points good? I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, she has Trinity with plus two damage on all the profiles, so no matter what, she has the ability to at least take on other hackers, which happened. And then uh, that also took Thrasimedes infiltrating with a SMG. Um, because you gotta have, gotta have somebody up there to push a button. Yep. Steals one infiltrator. Yep, I'll take it. I took my one infiltrator in one of my two forward deployments. Yep. So this is what I ended up taking. Um, basically, I took the alpha on Isaac's recommendation. I mean, I can't really argue with it. It's a it's a really cheap, efficient package. It has all the things: counterintelligence, Stratego's level one, plus one command token, uh, and it 
can vaguely defend itself in a fight. I mean, it's going to die, but it might kill something as it goes out. Um, yeah. It's cheap, though, for 24 points, which allowed me to take Cho. And uh, Cho is great because Chain of Command, I can hide her his stuff. Uh, I took this. I took Andromeda as well, the exact same profile for the exact same reasons. I didn't want to over-infiltrate against Steel because that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> if I went second, I'd just be like, shoot me. Like, Feed me. Yeah, right? Like It's like, why? Um, then I took um, uh, what I would like to call the, the hacking package. So I took two serious uh, hackers, and that basically gives you huge hacking coverage in the midfield because all the serious bots have repeaters. Why um, so serious? Yeah, why so serious? Uh, and then to punish Adam in case he uh, left anything targeted, I took a missile bot. Um, and then the the thought came to mind that if I was playing any other army, any, any other army except for Steel or like BJSA, which has a lot of stuff with stealth, um, this wouldn't be a problem. But because all the things in Steel have stealth, I needed a way to force them out of stealth. So I took two um, two gangbusters with. Uh, with mad traps to to try to encourage them to like uh, dodge or whatever, and that would break stealth. Mm -hmm. I think we treated them as koalas in the game. None of them actually connected, so it was completely irrelevant. Um, but whatever. Oh, they're mad traps. Yeah, I just I just yeah. noticed that. <laughs> like literally Whoops. right now, because <laughs> I brought I brought koalas to the to your house. But anyway, whatever. Um, it's so, you. Yeah, it's fine. They just got an upgrade. <laughs> you, you dodged you dodged all of them, so it was not a big deal. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that was the game plan. Force a dodge out of like a Myrmidon or something and then hack it. And then if you foolishly bring it back to, you know, your your link, uh, I'll missile the crap out of you. It's kind of like killing ants, right? You like, Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> why, why do you have going? a red dot on your forehead? Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> then I took uh, a Nauf because Nauf is good at killing stuff. So he was in there. Uh, and then my secret sauce was a Lynx with Plasma because I figured I wanted to try it. And it also has decharges, and that was a good way to get across the field and blow up something. And then my real secret, secret plan was the Razor Hacker. And basically the game plan here, and this was the plan the entire time, was I would deploy a Sirius, give it the Uber Hacker token that lets it like blow up a server with its brain, and then Adam would kill it immediately. Like I had no uh, delusion about it surviving till the end of the game at all. <laughs> I was like, this is going to die. Hopefully I'll get to missile something or like glue something with the Sirius bot if it does die. Uh, and that will annoy Adam, and that will be worth it. And then the data pack will just fall at its its corpse, right? And then I'll put the razor exactly there, pick up the data pack on turn three, and then run it in for to the end zone, right? That was that was the Me plan too. from the beginning. Uh, and, I hate everything you're saying right now. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. So spoiler alert: that's exactly what happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, Adam starts by throwing a Myrmidon under the bus to get itself targeted or glued and clear a mad trap. Then uh, the Rasimedes pushes the button, gets targeted too. Uh, then, of course, why so serious, right? The guns down my poor, um, my poor uh, serious hacker lady, and the Razor is right there hanging out next to her. And then the rest of the the rest of the uh, the game is. Adam doing what Steel does and punching my face in with Diomedes. Uh, and then on turn three, I pop the razor out, grab the data pack, and go for gold. I just want to say, if that was your plan from turn one, you deserve an Oscar because by the bottom of turn two, you looked pretty miserable. I was pretty miserable because, <laughs> like, I was. Well, the bottom of turn two was when I forgot about the links. Yeah. That's, that's why right. I was pissed. Because oh, what happened but, was. You got uh, some Diomedes. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were all about plasma now. How could you forget? Well, I was I was so flustered because like I was expecting him to go after the stuff on the right and I thought Nauf was safe. And then he dropped it on Nauf and I was like, "Oh no." And then I just like yeah. and then and then like right after he super jumps or like you you activated him and then like went around the corner and then declared that you were going to shoot at the missile bot. And I already declared my arrow. And at that point, I was like, well, shit, I can't take this back. So and I think I even said, like, oh, crap, I made a huge mistake. And you're like, what? What did you do? And I was like, never mind, never mind, never mind. Um, and then, so this is the worst part of the I whole thing. I just thought you meant deploying like that. Yes, that that too. Um, <laughs> but uh, let me see if I can. Uh, like, so uh, WordPress has this thing now where it loads the pictures slowly uh, because it's loading them as, as we go. But effectively what happens is, you you are beating the crap out of my stuff and the the server over there, while Andromeda is flash pulsing you from across the table. Yes. Eventually, she lands a flash pulse, 
successfully uh, stunning you. And then you're like, well, okay, I've got one order left. It's time to get Diomedes out of here. So you're like, go to Hightail it out of there. And I'm like, aha, it's time It's time to reveal uh, the links and shoot you in the face with Plasma. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe you didn't do that earlier. What the hell is wrong with you? And then I was like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And I rolled a, I rolled a crit, a Plasma crit, no less. And you passed all of your saves. Yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> that's very upset. <laughs> that, that's punishing you for your previous transgression. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I was, I was very, very annoyed. Diomedes. Diomedes. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he's the worst. But it all worked out at the end. Uh, I'm just thankful that the server I had to go blow up was on the same side that the razor was on. Otherwise, things would have looked a little different. Um, but... Your name must be Candy, because you're giving me Diomedes. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah no i love diomedes i still do and uh yeah i need to work on my type five for sure <laughs> yeah but that stupid that server passed so many saves it really diomedes is. just bashing it with his daccw yeah but i mean like Andromeda's flash posting you on sevens, like, and she just kept whiffing. Yeah, I, I, you, I hit the thing like four times. Well, I mean, <laughs> I also saves. spent an entire order, and like, my die. entire second turn is me shooting Diomedes. <laughs> yeah, that's when I read that, I was like, oh, that, that's <laughs> like brutal. the entirety of the second turn, like, you're out of cover, <laughs> you're facing the wrong way on some of them. <laughs> Right, and you're just like, ooh, ow, this is tickles. I'm just like, what is happening? Like seven orders later, Diomedes is unscathed. Right, it would have been one thing if he like took a wound and like went prone and like uh, scurried away, right, with like an NWI or something. No, he was at full health, just like standing there. <laughs> he's just like, whatever, Stop. it's fine. Uh, what can I say? He's OP. Yeah, pretty much. Diomedes is OP. John, John. Like we didn't have all this shock ammo that apparently is prevalent everywhere in it. Right. Well, I plasma crit you. Just roll better, guys. <laughs> Plasma's inferior alien technology. I guess so. <laughs> to the power of dodging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just like the worst part is I cut some pictures from the battle report because it's just more pictures of Cho shooting Diomedes in the ass. <laughs> Like I was like, how many different words can I use stop. to like make gun noises? I was like, I'm done. Two is enough. <laughs> stop. Stop editing now. Pick I'm the two get, best I'm angles and move vectors. on. I want to make some Batman vectors for you. Yeah, Whoa. you should. How oh, Zork, bam, plant it. Yep. Yes. Oh my god! But that was a great game. That was a lot of fun. I felt really good until you won. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When you're like, excellent. So now I just walk into your deployment zone with this guy with the pack, and I was like, excuse me, there's a thing on the table that can still do that. Yep. We did have an Andromeda off. That was fun. That's that's also. But this like okay, so to frame pointing at each other. Yep. To frame this Andromeda off, I destroyed your one server, so I was ahead on servers. Yep. And I done my classified. Yep. So I'm like. If I just kill the one thing left on the table of John's capable of taking out my my server, then then John has a completely impotent third turn. And so I'm like, whatever, I'll send Andromeda in there. My Andromeda died. I'll send Mervidon in there. The Mervidon died. So I was like, shit, is he going to Andromeda me? Then you send Machion in, and then Machion okay. finally killed her. Yeah, but I was like, but I had to move Machion up, and moving Machion up Moved that whole link team up defending the the uh, the server. It opened it up perfectly for you. You couldn't have asked me to do something dumber. Well, I mean, in your defense, you did have a TR bot watching it. Yeah, that's true. You had to get through a TR bot and a flash boss bot to get there. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't yeah. totally undefended. But you're, I did have right. a mimetism thing in good range, like shooting through a low vis zone with saturation. I took care of the TR bot in one order, and then I one ordered down the uh, the flash pulse bot with the TO combi rifle, also in good yep. range. So it seems okay. And then I proceeded to data erase your rogue AI. 
<laughs> it's actually totally perfect having O12 go data erase some yeah. some steel feelings. Yep. Right now. Yeah, pretty gone. Much. It's a corrupted Ajax cube. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> It can't get any more corrupted. He's already broken, guys. I was gonna say this is what happened to Odysseus. There you go. Uh, so yeah, no, it was a it was an enjoyable game. Um, had a lot of fun playing on that table again. Mm-hmm. I want to play is, on that table again. It's it so ruthless. much fun. And yeah, I need to get a game map for it. Maybe I'll get one for Black Friday. I don't know, man. Like this is a really good game map, and like. With the prisma filter I'm using, it like kind of looks like actual water. Oh right. So I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of the way this turned out. Like the table, the table is painted, and it just mm-hmm. looks really good. Like this actually painted model looks really nice on it. Yeah. Did you get the mo- movement bonus with the uh, with the ranger? Uh, it's total terrain. I guess that still gets it, right? Yeah. I just sort of ignored it and moved four four. I mean, I don't know. definitely suffered the penalties, though. Yeah, I did. Yep. We both did. Yep. That's when I found out how little terrain skill all of Steel Phalanx has. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the series. It didn't matter in N3. I was like, whatever. They're all moving to 4 4, like cute, difficult terrain. Yep. But now, now it's a big deal. Yeah. Boo. That's fine. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And then 4, you can still have a table that is like a quarter. Ocean, you know, a quarter water terrain on the bottom level, and then quite a quite a bit of uh, low vis saturation, difficult terrain on top, mm-hmm. and it works just fine. But yeah, so you took that game away. Um, I got to play my steel phalanx, and I also got to get a, a good taste of some of the uh, chicanery that O twelve can come up with. Yeah, I I, I disguised Cho as a Omega HMG. And I had you fooled for most of the game, I think. Yeah. Uh, I just, I didn't employ her because you didn't leave anything to shoot. So I was like, I guess this is fine. Um, but yeah, just like. Well, I mean, her being, what it really did is that it, it kept Diomedes from going after her. Yeah. Right. You know, if she was anything squishier, I'd have been like, well, maybe I'll go kill that thing with Diomedes after I finish off Nauf. Right. But nope, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not touching that. You've got ODD and crap. I'll go spend four orders trying to break this server. Yeah, and now the next time I'll take a real Omega HMG. <laughs> and then blow your mind. <laughs> yep. I do wonder if the the multi-rifle heavy ride stopper is a better profile to hide Cho under for the Omega. Because no, it doesn't give away it, switch. it just looks scary at close range. You're like, I don't want to go near it. Well, the thing is, I wanted to hide the Swick because I I, oh, I yeah. needed like a big chunk of points and to hide the the links and the razor. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, so. it did it did the trick. Yeah. I I had no reason to suspect that you had another hidden deployment model that you were just w- letting me punch you in the face for three turns first. I mean, like <laughs> I did that was not part of the plan. Like losing my Sirius on the other side of the the map was not a part of the plan. Messing up the interaction with the with the links is not part of the plan, uh, but saving the razor there until the last possible moment was absolutely the plan. And if you had it let, went like, not to the perfectly. what's up? Said so it went not to the plan perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but this speaks to the resilience of O twelve. Yeah. Right? Well, shall we? Yeah, let's it's do it. Time for our main feature. All right, so let's talk about O twelve. All right. That's- or that's why you, both of you guys play games with O12, and, and I at least got to to watch them. Um, <laughs> yeah, really, what you did is you you actually hollow projected a nomad army as O12. So I mean, they do a good job of that. They do. I mean, yes, let's, talk about, let's talk about some of the the I guess the basic N4 mechanics and things that may have changed for O12. You know, the first one is that like that I caught was plasma, right? Plasma is different now. So the the one thing in the army that links. With the plasma carbine, now has a round blast instead of a, a teardrop blast. That's, Hector's in uh, there too, man. Oh yeah, and Hector, gross, right? So yeah, much plasma. They added Hector into vanilla too, so that's fun. Yep. <laughs> that's the thing. I really like round blast change with my combined. Um, 
I could imagine being very upset, being surprised by it. Right. <laughs> you know, you I guess so twelve as well. Well, well, you lived it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's it's rough. It's yep. nasty. You know, it still ignores cover on the damage. Mm-hmm. Basically, super double action. Yep. No, it's it's solid. Um, but O twelve kind of came in at this point that was really close to N four, anyways. So yeah. I don't think there's a whole ton of rules changes. Like I think any of their medium infantry, if they had any, were already four four. Um, I'm trying to think of the, did you catch any uh, any big changes for you, Isaac, when N four hit? Um, the the Alpha got the command token, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah. right. That was a, that was a pretty big deal, um, but it did feel like um, the main thing that came was the addition of the Starmata units because they kind of like they came yeah, they landed at the same time. So yeah. the we had the some of them from the uh, from from Code One, so we kind of had an idea of what they would look like, but um, having Having a Starmata drop, it really opened up a lot of what was what was available, and it just makes it makes vanilla O twelve look that much more appealing. There's just so many more options. I mean, it, it always felt like there was a lot of there was a lot of variety to list options. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, the Ram Racer that's new. <laughs> yeah, though I there's not really an attack bot, so. Oh, here's here's what you put it on. Here's what you put it on. The side bot for the lock keeper. Now the lock keeper suddenly has a CC22 little buddy <laughs> with, with, a, with a pair of CCW that gives the opponent negative three. Uh, sure. I mean, it moves. It moves eight, six yes, as an imitism. It does. Yeah. That's pretty that's, crazy. That's my that's my that's million pretty, dollar idea. Right uh, I mean, there's the bikinis, but I think the problem with with uh, leaning on on remotes in vanilla is that there's it's really hard to support them in the way that you can do in other armies, mm. and you kind of use them as as support for your other stuff as opposed to the other way around. And it, it feels like coming from from Pano, where they can build really strong remote centric lists that are like. Your your guys are supporting the bots doing the work. It feels right, like... like they don't have they don't have uh, bulleteers, right? They don't have right. very obvious attack remotes. Um, right. But if you did put it on the Raptors Deva, he would be CC twenty two and have a negative six pair of CCW. Yeah, I mean the the Raptor is is amazing. I love that thing. I want as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I want I want this in vanilla because it's just that good. I mean, the 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 Raptor was definitely O twelve looking at the Rasail and being like, "I can do that." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I uh, I'm I'm looking forward to playing it. I haven't actually got it on the table yet, but I know it's going to go well. Yeah, uh, it's going to be really, really solid. And it's, so, it's just going to pair really well with if you want to do a a list with Ferengians, which I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, you can have a smoke screen to help you approach. Mm-hmm. And then, as soon as you get in the midfield, that thing's just going to be rough to deal with, right? So I don't think there were, you know, I, I, there there weren't huge overall changes. Some assault hackers got turned into regular hackers, like on the serious. Um, yeah, I mean, but that alone is a pretty big deal, right? Can we just talk about that for a minute and like why yeah, that's yeah. so strong? Because I mean, like for basically the same ish points as a Moran or a double Moran, you get. Quite a lot. It's more vulnerable to hacking, right? Because you can kill or hack a bunch of stuff in there. Um, yeah. But that is a lot more board presence than I would say even a, even a Moran gives you. Yeah. I guess yeah, with two of those, you have basically the damn near the whole table. Yeah. Like right. from one side to the other with the hacking radius. Yeah. And like we were talking about at the end of our game, if we weren't playing on the R1 table, we're playing in a more traditional building table, those guys would have just been prone on a roof. Yep. And yeah. there's basically nothing you can do about that. If you're going to walk through the midfield, you're going to have to deal, you're going to have to dodge a mad trap and then you're going to get spotlit and you're, you're going to have to clear a target or I'm dropping missiles on you. Right. That's gross. Yeah. It's, one of them alone can make it basically a 26 inch 
long wide uh, hacking area at the widest point. Yep. And you can supplement it with the dirt cheap gap hacker if you really want to. Like if you're if you're running a bunch in the backfield for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan. Um Yeah, I like think... if there's a yeah, Moran hacker with a with a fast panda, you'd be all over it. Yeah. Or... Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the the other thing that is that is uh, is pretty nice is that you don't have to double down on the serious hackers. You can just do one serious hacker, like a serious Red Fury or something, or a Ford Observer that also gives you some more um, flexibility. I mean, like in my in the game that we played, it might have made more sense to like give uh, one of them a boarding shotgun, right, and be a Ford Observer because that gives you discharges yeah. for mind wipe or something. So yeah. that seemed reasonable to me, but I I really wanted the complete coverage and the ability to just target all anything you decide to send up the table um mm-hmm. um they did get you know so vanilla always has access to the the interesting mercenary stuff mm-hmm. they kind of got a lot of mercenaries thrown in here i feel like with the n4 change sure. um yeah you know, i don't remember like they didn't have hector before hector's I new think, i think they had now from hippolyta yes um yeah. but andromeda is new Octavia is new. Agnes, I think, was in there. But she's Agnes. Oh, yeah. Like, whatever. No. Um, it's no not, yeah, she's just there because you're, you're going to have a model for her and you, yeah. you want to put her uh, at the table. Uh, Shona, the Rem Racer. Yep. And then, yeah, like you said, the new the new units for Stramata were added in. Parvati. Uh, Saladin was added. So there's yeah. a lot that they threw in. You know, Not even really rule changes to the game that affected them, but a lot of units that they didn't have mm-hmm. before, and they were only around for a minute. We should right. spend a brief moment on Parvati because she's changed a lot since the last time we talked about her. Because when they released her preview, all of the numbers oh, were yeah. wrong. So, first right. of all, she was a 38 point single wound model. Now she's a two structure model for 30 <laughs> for 38 points, and she comes oh. with all the extra stuff. Right? Yeah, and remote presence. So, she's going to be two. If you had another engineer, you could bring her back. <laughs> Well, and structure, so she's immune to Toha farts. Like, yeah, she's she's awesome. Yep, I I really like her. Um, there's just there's just so many things that she's got going for her. She's just really survivable too. People yeah. don't. Really she's survive. engineering on 18s. Yeah, uh, she's doctoring on 15s, but she's got Akbar doctor, so she heals two wounds when she does that. Mm-hmm. The dual SMGs. She's a yeah. beast with 38 points. Six two. Yep. Super jump specialist. Like she can actually you can actually run her up the table and go push buttons. Yeah. I I really like her. And six two with super jump, I think, is important because of the change to super jump. Yes. Units that are four four super jump are significantly worse than than six two. Or mm-hmm. rather Six two on super jump is significantly better than four four. Six anything, right? Look at Tariq. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. So that's yeah, no, she's she is killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I could take her in steel, I would often. Right? I'm kind of surprised that she's not, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the, the she's reason is. She's an OSS, that's why. Yeah. She's just so good though. I mean, I still has plenty of good things. It'll, it well, you know what it is? She doesn't have ODD. It's a They're no, like, nope, get out of here. No ODD, not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> she she doesn't have it, and I don't believe it's a Greek name. I think it's a Sanskrit name. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. So, so she doesn't fit. Doesn't fit the mold. Sorry. It's okay. I'll take her in my OSS. It's fine. I mean, uh, they do. Uh, Steel does get a wild card with with. Uh, so I guess the, the, the internet steals bad. <laughs> uh, I I beg to differ. I got you educated yourself. I think they got a significant improvement. Um. So uh, O twelve also got crushers. Yes, everybody loves two in vanilla. Mm-hmm. I think I that, thought they only one. Yeah, you get two. I think the problem with that I have with crushers is that they they are a significant investment. So you kind of have to build your list around them as a as a major player, whereas things like Cirrus and Gangbusters are uh, they're inexpensive. They help uh, fill really really important roles, and they are just uh, 
uh, good at supporting things and like synergizing with other. Right, they're they're up there in points with the with the razor. Yeah, I mean, and they're good. I mean, they are really good. But you have to you have to basically plan your list with that kind of hole, point wise, in there, and that kind of investment, and yeah. just uh, invest in that in that as a strategic attack piece that can also push buttons. Which, uh, granted, um, with you... thirty five points and one swick, that SMG light rocket launcher for yeah, for yeah. to play eight inches, like. That's feeling pretty good, and they're all Ford observers. Yeah, it's really good. Specialists. Yep. I mean, but look at the betas. They're also that kind of point range. So uh, that's what I, one of the problems I ran into. I was like, like, well, you could also run a beta, and that thing is amazing. <laughs> and it can climb on walls. <laughs> betas are pretty beefcake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they are really, really solid, but. Um, you you have to be like okay this is what I want to use them for and have a plan for them. It's it's a different situation in vanilla though, and we can talk about them more in the con- in this context of Starmada. But in vanilla, I think they're uh, one of the nice things that O12 has that I think Starmada struggles with is the ability to just have stuff in the midfield. Yeah, uh, yeah. And vanilla so, actually has a pretty solid board control game. Yeah, they really do. Right. So it's what serious um, gangbusters. Razors, Razor. these guys. Uh, what are we missing here? Andromeda. Andromeda. You've got tons of AD options. Ton, yeah, tons of excellent AD options. Like, you know, the deltas are fantastic. Um, so there's, ton, there's tons of opportunity to just have stuff in the midfield. And all the stuff that's in the midfield is super good at controlling it, right? Like, yep. hidden deployment stuff is good. Giant templates are good, right? Um, yeah, it's just... There's, I don't think you need them in, in, in vanilla. I feel like if you're taking one in vanilla, you're sort of like, well, uh, I want to use the light rocket launcher in the midfield. I have a use case for that. And yeah. that's the tool I need. So you, you right. don't get and, that. And you're just talking about deployment during the beginning of the game, but they also have a fair amount of airborne deployment troops. Um, that cru- Again, going back to the crusher, that crusher combat jump is basically a two-owned airborne deploy piece. Sure. Curve of gold scene is scary. And he has come. He's a ton of points, though. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't like him. No, he's, he's fine, but like, he suffers from the same problem that Raul has, right? Like, I'm using I'm using them to get he into to a your good position. Hmm? He wants to eat your order bowl. To be honest, I I think I like the Crusher option more than than Goldstein. Yeah, Just because, and there's there's similar points, and. Uh, it just has two wounds. <laughs> That's sorry, John. right. I was like, sorry, John, I cut you off. So why do you why do you hate Cuervo? What do you have against his sunglasses? I have nothing against his sunglasses. Uh, if his sunglasses could kill, then I'd be all on board. But I, I just, especially now with the boarding shotgun changes, I kind of don't want to use him like that. Yeah. Um, I, I sort of, especially now. In and for am a lot more careful with my units. Uh, like things, there has to be a plan for when they die. Like losing the serious in our game, like that was part of the plan. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't really want to run Cuervo in there and just like suicide him in and get something done, but then lose him. He's too expensive for that. I don't. It just doesn't really fit my playstyle. I'm much more happy like bringing on a Tomcat, shooting like two cheerleaders in the butt or maybe a specialist and then climbing up onto roof and going prone. And then you have to come dig him out. Right. That's a lot more appealing mm-hmm. to me than just like dropping Corvo in. Cause all the stuff he has is great, right? Boarding shotguns. You can boarding shotgun a link, but he's going to die yeah. during that. Getting him close to SMG something. There's like, like, especially now, like getting close is a detriment. I feel like, cause everything in their mother has a freaking light shotgun now, which right. is, which is direct template. So there's just teardrops everywhere. And you're just crying salty tears everywhere because like you can't get close to stuff. So <laughs> I, I I feel like combi range band stuff is more important now. And they and like so f- remember back in N3 we used to talk about SMGs and we're like SMGs are amazing. Why wouldn't everybody take SMGs? Because you can just use them all the time. And if you're up close, then like you can challenge things because you have three burst and you have shock and AP and it's damage thirteen. It's fantastic and you get a discount on your model. Well now there's, it's clear why you have that discount because sure you can come around the corner and and see like I'm SMGing you in the face. So like all right, well this is a grunt. You know, infiltrator, and he has a shotgun. So, woof! Here's a flamethrower. Woof! Here's a 
here's a here's a shotgun template, or like here's a gulam, right? Like you could kill, you could like a gulam could take out Cuervo. Yeah, right. Like just like like well, a, a three man gulam, like one guy corner guarding Cuervo's gone. Maybe I mean twenty five percent chance of that happening. I mean he's he's just getting double templated in SMG range. Sure, but double but being double templated with arm three against damage thirteen, he's passing on elevens. He has effectively two wounds. Sure, sure. Zero B, uh, BTS, which does kind of suck if you're into a nanopulsar. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, fine, change it to pulsers. CSU. Right now, you're sure. same. Oh right? yeah, okay, that's more of a problem. <laughs> but, but, but like you see my point, right? Like I've invested all this yeah. not only points into this guy, I've also invested a bunch of bunch of orders and mental headspace thinking about how I'm going to use him. And it's just always like. I don't want to take the risk of pushing him deep into a deployment zone. I want to be cagey with it and engage something out at 16 where you can't template me. Mm-hmm. I, one of the things that I find frustrating is that the some of the perks of expensive 80 uh, troops um, are like you can drop a mine or you can be really effective at shooting things down, but he's just not he's not strong enough to shoot things down. I mean, that's why I look at the Crusher, because the Crusher has mimetism, and uh, it's got the boarding shotgun, it also has a Panzerfaust, and it has the D-charges, so it can come in and do work and uh, be a an aggressive presence and still be three points cheaper. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, compare him to Diomedes, right? Yeah. Diomedes has even the, the multi-rifle profile. I mean, you said it yourself. I would have taken the Mark 12 profile because of the range ban, but I didn't have the points. So you downgraded yeah. to a multi-rifle. Yeah. Right? Like, if he had a multi-rifle, I'd be all over Cuervo. Yeah, that 6-inch or that 8-inch optimal range really is punishing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get around it with BS-13 and a shotgun because you'd be on 10s, but that still kind of sucks. Right. Yeah. It's it's a really rough rough profile to to yeah. try to make work. I find it's more interesting to get two deltas in there because you, you're doing things like yep. Here's some light and, rocket stoppers. Yeah, and delta are super efficient. Yeah, yeah. Delta and, are super efficient. They're just solid. Or hell, one of the new Nyoka, right? You can take a multi rifle forward observer guy for twenty seven points, yep. or a red fury. Right for twenty nine points. That's that's so cheap for a BS twelve red fury. Nyoka are starting in your deployment zone. No, no, this is a parachutist profile. Oh, yeah. that's right. I forgot they had that. Yeah, that's such a weird profile, just out of the blue. <laughs> I'm yeah. parachutist. It's a little odd, but I mean, even their parachutist horde observer for twenty seven points is pretty solid. Yeah, right. So With I mean, like that. That's a much yeah. more interesting profile to me than Corvo. I mean, like, I think you take Cuervo because you're like, low, 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 I want to go, like, chop a tag in half or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, if, I mean, limited assertion isn't really a thing anymore, but, I mean, that's something that you would do. Like, if I'm going to bring an AD, I'm going to bring the best at chopping <laughs> half. Yeah, I'm going to bring the best. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. Just, <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, there's... One thing to note, though, on the Crushers... They are Ford observers, but they do not have a flashbolt. Yep. So, things to know. I mean, really, the reason why you go for Quiver Gold Scene is because you, you want, uh, was it Rajini Kanth from 2.0, the Indian action movie? Yes, yes. That is, yes, that is, yes. That's the approximation yeah. you can get. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so good. If you uh, haven't seen that movie, you can has- go- Google it. Yeah, you should definitely yeah. look at that one. But uh, the one of the things that has changed is the gangbusters are different. They, True. um, the combi rifle light riot stopper profile is much more attractive now that uh, um, the changes to, and the boarding shotgun profile is even more attractive now that there's uh the changes. <laughs> <clears throat> that's um, what I should have done. I should have run this guy up against you and light riot stoppered you. Yeah. Yeah, that would have hurt. I mean, it I just forces me I to dodge. Hmm? It just forces me to dodge. 
Well, what I, I, I also, I forgot to, I forgot several things. One is that I had a links on the table until an order too late. The second thing <laughs> is I forgot this guy had a light riot stopper. And I forgot that my alpha has plus one command token. So I had a plus one command token. At this point, I think both gangbusters were in group one because I moved them over yeah. after you killed Millicent. So then I would have popped Cho out, idled for the first thing, and then moved him into view, right? So now there, you have an Omega HMG in air quotes looking at your butt, and you have this guy running at you with the light riot stopper, and I can I'd do have both. Of them. A little. That would have solved the problem. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was your mistake, John. That was my mistake. Okay, I can be angry about that game now. Yeah. <laughs> you can be uh, angry about winning eight to three. Yeah, yeah, it but, wasn't ten zero. I mean, but it was so close. He could have failed that. Yeah, I could have. Uh, I had, have. Yeah, it was. It was probably going to be okay though, because I had D charges and a couple extra orders. So, um, but they're they're quite good. I mean, they're they're very very strong. Uh, having faced them and now played them, because I don't think I'd used them before. Yeah. Right. Um, I played O twelve a few times, but not with Gangbusters. Uh, MSV one and Mimetism minus three is a pretty solid combo because <laughs> yeah, you're basically yeah. granting mods and 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 denying mods at the same time. I mean, that was the thing. Like Bagmari back in the day were considered the OP link because they had MSV one and Mimetism. Right. And, and Kamau showed up. Yeah. Right. Let's not talk about Kamau. Um, <laughs> like that's a combination that has has been rare for a long time, and anything that gets it is immediately like a notch above. Yeah. Like yeah. Nauf. Yeah, Nauf is disgusting. It is also in vanilla. So van- looking at vanilla, looking at vanilla um, O12. What's the what do you think their shtick is? What what is O what what does O12 bring to the table? I'm a new player. Why do I want to play O12 other than the models are super cool? Man, I mean, you're bringing, like, maybe not the best, but very close to the best from things that other factions bring. Right, I feel like it's a very purpose-built army. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, granted, they have some unique things, like Brian Stoppers, but... Uh, I think one of the things that they bring is they just have tools that every faction has. It's not the best option that that all of the other factions have, but it's it's good. But it's priced in a way that, that makes it so you can't really like play like the other factions exactly. You're not going to be completely like them. You're going to be like Pano-ish. You can bring some heavy hitters and sh- heavy shooters and be like really nasty. You can be... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Alef ish. <laughs> you can be Alef. You can bring Davis. Uh, uh, there's like what four profiles that are directly from, or five profiles from. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> there's, they, they, I think that they just have a lot of things that are like other factions, and it's. I think it goes to to their like their fluff, or their they're pulling they're pulling the talent from all the kind of the people. UN. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of shows, but I think what, what what it means is that you have to you have to be really really careful not to um, say I'm bringing all of the cool toys and then not actually have the orders to support them. You have to like come up with a game plan for how you're going to spend your orders because if everything is your Rambo piece, then you end up with a whole lot of you know scatterbrain as you're trying to uh, get the mission done. Right. They they seem to have. Again, they seem to have very powerful individual pieces, yeah. but they don't seem to actually have a lot of cohesion. Um, there's not, yeah, there's like four Rambos. There's, there is a guy who is really good at shooting. There's another guy who's really good at pushing buttons, but you're not moving up a guy who is good enough at shooting to go push buttons. Um, that is kind of my take on them is that everything does a job and it does that job well, but they have a hard time covering other jobs. Yeah. Yes, yes and no. I mean, there are definitely some standout profiles that do multiple things, right? Like the Crusher in the midfield is a good example. That does right. a lot of things. It's also very expensive. Um, I kind of feel like O12 is, I mean, like most of the other human vanilla factions, 
they, they can do everything. Um, they feel like they have an option that fulfills basically any role you would want. And, you know, like just, we were just arguing about, it's like, oh, well, Crushers versus uh, Corvo Goldstein versus Deltas, right? There's, there's, there's choice at different point slots and to fill the same role, right? You, you, you get, you have a wealth of options. So mm-hmm. I guess um, the thing is like, but unlike something like Nomads where I can play vanilla and feel like I've made a list where I have everything that I want. Um, right. I have to, in Nomads, I have to have some, like, I, I can't do that in O12, right? Because I'll just run out of points because everything is more expensive. Yeah. But I get uh, a feeling of reliability that I don't get with Nomads, right? Like, there are very few things in Nomads that I'm like, I've, I have high confidence that this is going to go well, right? Like, I, I feel like if I throw a Kariza at something, I should kill whatever I'm shooting at, unless it's, like, some ODD thing, like, super far away, Um but you know, if I even I send like a Zon Nautica, which is a very common attack piece that I use, or like a zero or something, I don't feel confident that I'm going to get it done. In O12, I feel like whatever I send out is going to get the job done because it's got you know above average BS, decent armor, or some kind of you know shooting benefit like uh, like a Vismod or something. Like a Gangbuster is a perfect example, right? Like it's it is a cut above a normal midfield infiltrator, uh, so I feel like if I shoot at something, it should go down. Um, but I'm paying for it, so I can't have every all the toys now. But you kind of, you kind of gets balanced out because uh, maybe I can't have you know an intruder and a Kriza on the table like I can in Nomads, but one Omega will handle the job. Right. I think the other thing to realize is that um, they put up a really really strong control game, mm-hmm. but once you start punching holes in it, then it's really hard for them to close those holes. Because mm-hmm. their 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 control is based on stretching everything out. Yeah. So you can, I mean, you could try to put layers upon layers of defense in a zone, and like like with go, you know how you uh, you just you're trying to control an area. You can do that kind of similar thing with with O12, but it's if you really want to have full control, you punch some holes in it. And some of these, some of these good control pieces like the Gangbusters and the Cirrus, they they are hard to hit. hit but when once they get hit, they go down pretty easy. And once they start dropping, then a lot of your a lot of your tools for extending your control uh, start dropping. Like you don't have the mad traps anymore. You don't have yep. the extended um, repeater range. You have to bring it out of the deployment zone. And they have tools to to bring that back out like 80 troops that are really strong um but they and they have strong shooters but you have to like work and spend orders to basically fill those or uh, fill those gaps again and so it, it feels like if you don't if you don't have a plan for what happens when things go wrong then it's it's hard to find the orders you need mm-hmm. to, to finish the objective they, I mean, they do. They start, they start folding really fast. Their their soft stuff is pretty soft. I think it's a fun army, though. So, so that's kind of talking about vanilla. They have a lot of tools, a lot of tools. It's funny for such a new army, they really do have a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice. You know, you're not like waiting. I mean, I guess you're waiting on models to be released, sure. but their profiles are there. Yeah, I mean, it's a very um, secure army. Or yeah, yeah so I, I don't feel like I'm mm-hmm. I'm like missing a ton of stuff, right? Right. They can get smoke. You can proxy anything just about for a range in. Yeah. No, they're pretty. I mean, they're all around. They're they're present. You know, it's it's nice because what that means is that as they add on to it, they're adding on more interesting choices instead of more necessary choices. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's things like the Raptor, the Neoka. Yeah, like we didn't need so those like things, that. but they're welcome additions. Yeah, so let's talk a bit about that then. Let's talk about Starmata. So one of the things about Starmata is like there's a lot of sectorals that are that are good because of their increased availability on units. Shaz Vasti is is a great example of that. You often don't even run a link in Shaz Vasti. Starmata is not that. <laughs> um, right. I think the only unit that Starmata gets that isn't in vanilla is the Knight of Santiago and the Tian Gao. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. Yep. And Knight of Santiago is cool. Oh, no, no, they do get, uh, what's his name? Uh, Casanova? Casanova. 
And he oh is... boy, <laughs> get Casanova. <laughs> is he not in Vanilla? No, nope, not in Vanilla. I really, yeah. that's a little surprising. Yeah. Well, cool. So they get him. You know, <laughs> doesn't say a ton, but no. so what it means though is that it means that it's a sectoral that is really going to be. You take it because of its links, right? You're not taking it because of its increased availability of cool stuff. So their links right off the bat, you know, Kappa links we expected, right? You can yep. throw some blue coats in there, I believe. Yes. Blue coats themselves can link. Yep. Uh, Tian Gao, our wild card. Mm-hmm. Nioka, our link that you can you can build. Psychops, I think, are wild card. Yep. 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 Um Beta is troopers. Our... Are usable for um, Corin Harris, which are sorry. Betas are Corin Harrisable. Yep. Yep. Which is a nice heavy infantry remote link. Yep. You can cheapen it with all the cheap wild cards too, so that helps. Are they HI or are they remotes? They're HI. Ooh, that would have been actually kind of cool with the Ram Racer in Vanilla, right? <laughs> Too bad. Uh, you can make a bronze duo, or you can make a bronze duo with a Knight of Santiago. Bronzes if can you... also join Beta Trooper and Yoka links. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And blue coats. Yeah, and blue coats. And they uh, join blue coats too? Yeah. Yeah. Blue coats have core, so I don't yeah, know why. I mean, you know. can. <laughs> I think the bronze duo might be the most expensive non tag duo in the game. It's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't know why you would do it. Yeah. I haven't figured it out. I mean, but the thing that okay, so again, like these are the reasons why you're taking them. If if the, you are not sold on these links, if you're not sold on having Hector in a link, I mean, you should be sold on having Hector yeah, in a link. Good. <laughs> That's good. You want that? If if you're not sold on having Hector in a link, then then start this episode over. Think about what, is, what you just said, and when you get here, you can continue. <laughs> like, yeah, no, Hector in a link. In a five man link? Try and then come back. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like do me a favor, just make a thread on the Ala forums moaning about how he's not good in a five man link. <laughs> see how the, the Steel Felix players respond. Uh, yep. So yeah, so you can throw Hector in a big link there. He's wild card. He's not. So they get, like, he's not wild card? No. Oh yeah, sorry, you can only join those specific ones. It's you can't Betas join or uh Nyoka. Okay, so we can't join blue coats or kappa, basically. That would be yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that's way too cheap yeah. to support him. What well, are you gonna do? Nyokas are pretty cheap though, and you can get a lot of cheap things in there, like yes. the blue coat. <laughs> right. So you can't put a blue coat in there, can you? All right, the uh, cyber cops is what yeah, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. about. Cyber cops. Me too. The cyber cops. So the other thing, kind of when when analyzing this is sectoral, like really seeing what they miss out on, the army has very poor board control. Yeah, yep. you know they can start off, they can they can buy crushers, which as we just discussed are good but not cheap. Nope. Right. And that's your midfield. So they're kind of uh, you're kind of giving the the table over to the opponent for the first turn or two. As they're writing a lot of. A ODD less steel phalanx because of how they don't have a midfield presence. <laughs> yeah. Shots fired. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. But but what they do have yeah. in droves is climbing plus. Yep. They have tons of climbing plus. So that's going to be a little bit dependent on the table that you play and like and whether or not that is a worthwhile investment. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. play on many of any of my tables. Then being able to get up terrain pieces on the sides of buildings and and whatnot, like that's that's huge. Mm-hmm. And like, they the bronze has climbing plus, the Zeta has climbing plus, so they have like not just regular infantry with climbing plus, but some serious heavy hitters. The troopers all have climbing plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nyoka have climbing plus. Yeah. I mean, their uh, their fl- combi, their uh, sorry, Ford Observer bot has climbing plus. The total reaction remote has climbing plus. Yep. They have a lot of stuff with climbing plus. They're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hide from the law. Nope. <laughs> um, 
So like that is that is an interesting aspect to them, and that's maybe a reason why bronze and Yoka is is the better place, other than Yoka being less expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the bronze brings is the just the total immunity. Yeah, it's maybe not... we can take a look at bronze. I haven't quite figured them out yet. They're... I kind of find them as compelling, to be honest, as a as a razor or yeah. beta. Like they're horrendously expensive for what they do. They're so expensive, but I mean, okay. So they're two wounds, armor four, BTS six, total immunity. Yeah, they are resilient. That that's the thing. They're just going to be resilient. As hell. I mean, they're they're not though, because I'll just shoot them with an HMG and they still go down. They yeah, sixty visor. Uh, sure, I don't. Any, I don't so hide it. Oh. Just don't face the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very very true. Um, I mean, like, how often, how often in your games, you know, have you actually wished you had 360 visor? Well, how many times shoot diabetes in the butt last game? Once. What I like about the 360 visor is whenever um, there's infiltrators that come in with camo and they do the cheeky moving around. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's relevant. But I mean, like, there's just. Right, it's not like he's up the table seeing behind him. Like if yeah. if he needs to see behind him, they've airborne deployed or you've done something really bad. Right. So I can see that. It's it's a cool thing. I hope it's not an expensive piece of equipment. Based on his point values, I I don't know. It's I mean uh, he's expensive because he's a two wound total immune model. Right. With yeah. high, high BTS. Yeah. I mean like he'll 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 stick around for like one extra order of getting shot at. Maybe, I feel like this would be a different pers- a, a different um, statement or something if if he had like a missile launcher. Yeah, I, that's what I always felt about it. Is that if he had some sort of longer range option, I think it's not bad. It gets up to twenty four inches, and he has climbing points to get good angles. But I mean, there's just so much shooty crap in Saramata that I don't need him. Right. right. Or better yet, if you do, I mean, really, what he. The, the the profile I like the best is the specialist operative with the multi rifle and light riot stopper because then you can put him in park him in the middle and be like come at me I will hold this area for as long as I can. I mean and that's will. it's an unstoppable specialist. There right? there is something to be said for that right like he ignores EM he ignores flash balls he ignores adhesive, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he does have a para CC weapon with martial arts level one, so he's putting on minus nine. That's pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. But I mean, like, I would have preferred a points drop and have him be one wound and total immune. Like, that yeah. feels like... Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's supposed to just be a wall, and that's what he is. Yeah, I mean, so Greg in chat is saying that running him in a Nyoka link with Parvati is is great because you can just pick him right all the way back up to full health. Yeah, oh, that's a thing. Jesus Christ. That's annoying. That's um, awful. You could do the same thing with the beta, though. I feel like that says more about Parvati than it does about the bronze, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> that could be like Hector. It's, it's, she could be bringing Hector back up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, it's, it's, not, it's like clearly he does work. It's just, I just, I don't know. It doesn't offer me anything that I can't get anywhere else in the army, and it doesn't bring enough cool stuff in the profile for me to want it. Uh, I guess maybe my tune will change if we suddenly start seeing, like, ridiculous flash pulse spam, right? Just, like, in our in our meta, we just see, like, all of the flash pulse bots all day, every day, and, like, war cores mm-hmm. everywhere. Then yeah okay I'll I'll think about it. I don't see that as a as a real problem. So yeah. how do you how do you think of him compared to like as a a souped up version of a Karakuri? I mean he is. But the, you like that heavy shotgun Karakuri? He's not he's not an, an innate specialist though. He's he is a little bit less susceptible because he's not a um, sorry they're not remote either. But he's uh, easier to doctor, right? I like doctors ward engineers. I take more doctors and engineers. Although I guess with the Parvati, you're you're having your or paramedic too, yeah, no. or a paramedic. He has climbing plus. If if you gave my character climbing plus, they would be on roofs. 
Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I guess you could see him as a Karakuri, but I just... Uh... Karakuri brings so much more stuff, though. They all have chain rifles. They all have Panzerfausts, right? They all have right, flash right. pulses. They have, like, a one-shot stop ARO. He does not. Well, that, that paramedic, heavy shotgun, acrylic cannon. I mean, acrylic but cannons, that's only one profile, though, right? And, like, I'm not going to take... Like I, I feel like you want him to come out and deal with the threat at long range and feel like you, he's the guy or, that you send off to the missile launcher. Like right. why, why you take that one over the specialist operative? It's the same amount of points, and you can bring along fire support with whatever he's linked with. Right, like ultimately the issue is paying paying for survivability through armor, wounds, and multi or uh, total oh, immunity yeah. means that you're not. Your, your survivability isn't from winning face-to-face rolls. Your survivability is from losing them. Right. I mean, just taking right. taking He's, the threat of missile launchers off the table is kind of nice. <laughs> he is incredible at losing face-to-face rolls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is, he is so. He's probably one of the best things at losing face-to-face rolls. Like, well, oh man, well, I'm, at least I'm armor seven, and I'm only taking one roll. Just this dude in like crazy riot gear uh he's literally just walking and things are just exploding off of him i love the model. i mean he's I he's like a movie marine right? <laughs> yeah. and like has terrible bs i don't know whatever i i think i yeah. think basically what yeah. it boils down to is right now looking at his profile i don't see a compelling use case for him which means i'm obligated to try him on the table right <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, and I think you know I wasn't really thinking about him framing it as a Karakuri because I like Karakuris a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think really what does him in though is that um, his link options aren't very appealing to me because if I'm going to take those links, I really want to put Hector in them. Right. And then I've spent all my points on Hector. I need to fill out the rest of my list to get the ten orders. That's probably okay. the biggest point against him for me at least because like if i'm playing if i'm playing starmada it's because i want hector in a link um and until i get over that hump right i like i've plasmid enough things and i've got my jollies then like i can start taking this guy but i i I feel like that's a that's a very good um framing for him like he is the starmada karakuri i wasn't thinking about him that way now that i am it makes him a little more interesting um but then karakuri (laughs) can do things like take the maru right yeah and that really amps them up a lot. And the stuff that he comes with is kind of like, it's good, but uh, it's not a tomorrow. So I think the other thing that it makes it, uh, I guess, frustrating is that I, I know he's going to do his job. Well, he's going to be in the midfield. He's going to get there. He's going to be fine. He's going to be hard to remove. And that's probably what he's supposed to be doing. He's kind of boring at doing it though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not shooting plasma fireballs at your face. Yeah, Therefore, so, not interesting. <laughs> there are there are cooler, flashier, funner uh, heavy infantry to bring into the midfield. Yeah. Uh, is he going to live? Yeah, and so I think there's there's a, a lot of people who are going to gravitate towards a defensive playstyle, and he's basically the best at doing that. But he's not though. He doesn't have aside from the acrylic cannon. He doesn't have anything that stops you in one shot. I mean, well, the multi-rifle DA round, I mean, like, but how often does that actually straight up kill something, right? I, I just... Yeah, you have to be close to the right number. Total immunity actually impacts a game. It basically it takes, it takes uh, AROs from being a scary thing, and it turns them into a relatively nuisance of a thing. Yeah. Active that's turn, true. that's a different story, because bullets... But, uh, I mean, when you can walk up, and slop off really scary ammo, then, I mean, that's really Fair. solid. Fair. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting point, John. Like, you and I almost have this, like, weird micro meta because we're kind of the only people we've been playing against each other lately. Yeah. We're like, we're not facing off against double missile ARO links. <laughs> right, because we, we don't you like playing You haven't that. played against, yeah, and you haven't played against my Akari in a while, yeah. right? Which is the only place where I run them. Right. And so if you are going down, if you are facing down a double missile link like a bronze with red fury like he's going to beat one of those two rolls at yeah. worst and, shru- and very possibly shrug off a missile hit yeah. and live to try it again you know he can't be 
he can't get a you can't get a lucky blitzing through on him, hoping to to take him out that way. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're you've got to you kind of have to active turn burst him down. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But I guess I guess you know using that as an example, right? Like my tool of choice would be an epsilon. Or I'm not going to send the bronze off of you. I'm going to get out of 40 inches, shoot you with a sniper rifle that has mimetism, and take you off the table that way. Maybe that's not an option in Starmada. It is. It, they can take an Epsilon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, they all, I mean, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> uh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but like like I just like yeah, I, I agree with you in principle, right? Like if we were running in a in a world where we had some serious heavy ARO presence where like everything was left out. Um Yeah. Yeah, I could you know, there there's a there's a case to take the Red Fury and start shooting and stuff, but you're in the you're in a kind of a bad range band to do that, right? I can't really unless I have a way to get me there. Um yeah, I guess I guess. You can certainly set it up with like Varangians and stuff. Um, right, but it takes work to make work. Use them. It, it feels clunky would... to me, right? Like, cause, cause it's the same kind of thing that I sort of got away from playing intruders because uh, the Kreeza is just more reliable and uh, it takes less setup. Because well, intruder, I, mean, I have to like throw smoke first and then I shoot you. The Kreeza, I just shoot you. Right. right. So just the Kreeza is a game changing kind of unit, though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, I do. I would use these at a, when uh, in a quadrant control kind of mission, because they just. I mean, they're probably going to live. Well, let's talk <laughs> about that specifically because I actually uh, made a, a a list that was for a quadrant control mission, and here it is. So this was my answer to that. Um, this was for was it? Oh yeah, it, I, I can never get this right. It's what, whichever one you can blow up the consoles. I think that's supremacy. Supremacy. Okay, it was for supremacy because we were originally going to play that before, because Adam and I knew about Mind Wipe beforehand before it was released because you know the War Corps got an early release copy, um, but we couldn't talk about it. So we're like, well, well, we'll just play we'll play supremacy so we can actually you know talk about that without revealing any secret CB sauce. Um, mm-hmm. So you know uh, this was the list I came up with for that and. Yeah. Uh, because you know we just talked about Starmada doesn't have a lot of um, uh, board presence. My board presence choices were crushers. I had that's it, right? There's the yeah. only things that can really start in the midfield, so that's what I did. Uh, and then I took a, a, a TR bot to sort of help them out, right? Guard their backs in case something gets behind them. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to challenge a long fire lane with them. I just want to protect the, cr- the crushers. Um, and then because uh, supremacy demands that you push buttons, and I'm going to have very slow. Uh, stuff otherwise right like there's a lot of fast stuff in the hector link which i'll get to in a second but i wanted some quick speedy uh ability to position and i also wanted the ability to peace trade without actually losing any pieces right because whatever i was i think i was going to play against your us ariadne or something and i was like was i plan. cannot afford to be huh that was the plan yeah, yeah so i was like i can't afford to to fight your your grunt flamethrowers and trade like hector for that that's like not acceptable right so right, right. i decided that i would take um a law keeper and a raptor, both of which have peripherals with great template weapons. And I'd be like, all right, I'm crowning the corner with this thing. Kill it if you want, but I'm going to glue or flamethrower you. And then you're not a problem for me anymore. And then I can continue on with my day. So that was what I decided to do. Uh, and both of them are specialists. The killer hacker is completely irrelevant against USC Ariadna, but like it pushes buttons just fine. Um, so that was the reason I took that. Uh, and then the rest, you know, the, the, the flash pulse button work or we just said I ran out of points. Uh, and then I have a, the Mega Link, which is Hector as a lieutenant for the two additional orders, um, a Nyoka heavy rocket launcher, because that is the cheapest Nyoka that I felt like taking. <laughs> and it's great. And Parvati, because as we've talked about already in chat, Parvati is awesome. Uh, it's actually the cheapest Nyoka profile. Yeah. Yep. And it's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's good. I just, you know, yeah, I, I, I waffled for a long time because... Like you either take this Nyoka or you take a, a um, shoot a, a beta trooper, right? To actually be able to form a legal link because you need one of them in there. Uh, and it was like, do you take the beta Spitfire because that kind of like overlaps with what Pla- Hector's trying to do? Because like if I'm Spitfiring stuff, I'm not plasmating stuff, and the whole point of this list is to plasma stuff. Uh, and then I was like, well, do you take the beta Killer Hacker? But then you have like you're doubling up on 
on submachine guns, and that's not great either for reasons we've already talked about. Yeah. So I decided well, to go with heavy rocket launcher, and I was like, that's also kind of like stepping on Hector's toes a little bit because it's a Bernie template thing. Um, but I was like, this is literally the cheapest thing that I can take and form this link. <laughs> so I'm going to take it and move on yep. with my day. Uh, by, by cheapest thing, you still mean it's a hair that costs 126 points. Yes. Well, but if the Nyoko is the cheapest <laughs> thing that I could take to make the hair. I know. Uh, so that's why that's why I took it. And like, it's just, it's just not exciting to me because I, the thing that's exciting there is Hector. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it seemed seemed like a thing. That I was taking, I was I was pretty happy with this. No, it was looking brutal. the The 126 point Harris plus 70 points of crushers. Yep. Starting outside your deployment zone is a lot of points outside your deployment zone. Yeah. Then that yeah. Pilar is climbing plus. The Raptors are fast. They're six two. Yep. And then a law keeper is obviously fast. Yep. You, the only thing you're leaving in a deployment zone is the flashball spot in Warcore if you want. Yep. And that's ten points. You know, so building a list that's 290 points that can easily get out of your deployment zone is that's the right thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I was ready to face that in supremacy. They're all capable. Like, I have to burn that Harris to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Provide and hey, if it was a bronze, I could burn it to the ground because total immunity has no effect on continuous damage. Is that a thing, but really? Doesn't it? Oh no! It, sorry, it ignores traits. Yep, my bad. Yep. I keep messing oh, yep. that up. One of these days, I'll get the rules right. Yeah, we we're not going to play a correct game event for for like a couple of months based on the rate of games we're getting in. I know, right? So Ugh. I think if we got like two tournaments in, we'd get it locked down. Um, so yeah, there were, there to answer your question, Greg, in chat, I I was tempted to get Andromeda in there, but the problem was that my in, my anticipated opponent was. U.S. Ariadna, and that's a very large base to hide from flamethrowers. Yeah. So that's yep. really what Ariadna is good at at being in the middle. Yeah. Like I, I, I wanted to take Andromeda, but she's just too easy to light on fire. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to like spend thirty thirty points on on feeding Adam a model. I mean, I was already concerned about the crushers. <laughs> I think the young folk would say that booty is lit. <laughs> 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 I'm, uh, I'm turning 38 this year, damn it! I get to start calling them young folk. Yeah, and and you you are a card carrying dad, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. Um, I know. So Starmada, I kind of feel like every, pretty much every army. I haven't gone through and checked off the list to make you know check it twice. Um, but I think that every army basically has like this is the face punch sectoral. You take this sectoral. Instead of the vanilla or the other sectorals, because this is the the one that has the most face punching in it. Mm -hmm. And I suspect this is the O12 face punch sectoral. So when we see Bure Aegis or whatever future sectorals come in, they'll probably be a little bit less uh, direct, I would imagine. Yeah. And maybe have a little bit more, more gadgets and doodads. But this army is, it, it has poor board control, but is also surprisingly maneuverable, which is a weird thing. Yeah, they make up for the board control by sending Judge Judge Dread after you on his lawkeeper. <laughs> they still have a lot of mimetism, and that that really should not be discounted because that is a lot of the ability to just say, "All right, I got by this skated by this time." <laughs> right, they do have a fair amount of of rules to help modify the face to face role. Mm -hmm. um, so, how about that Tian Gao? I want to talk about that really quick because it's a very odd. Thing just to throw in the list. You know, the basic troop, 22 yeah. points, I probably would never take. Um, maybe the Red Fury, but it's a wild card. You can throw it anywhere, so you can use it to dilute cost. But I don't know, where where would you use this guy in Star Mata? Like, they put him in there, and it's like, well, why? What is the thing I'm not seeing? Why did they put Tian Gao in here? All one of them. What is it pulling off? I've heard a lot of people talk about the mad traps in there, or not mad traps, the uh, jammer as like, oh, a linked jammer, but I, I don't feel like that's really that exciting. It is the only mad traps in the sectorial, and right. it's underneath a um, hollow projector, so that's a plus. Um, 
it, I think yeah, that's that interesting. The only reason I would take it, to be honest, would be to to do the uh, the hollow projector with like a red fury. Yeah, I kind of feel like that. The the I guess not first section, second section. It's just Tian Gao first section, and then other Tian Gao. Um, I kind of feel like the hollow projector one is where I would look in this army. Mm-hmm. It's just a bummer to to not use wild card. There's there's something to be said for hiding the killer hacker in a link that doesn't look like it has a hacker, right? So if yeah. you took a beta Harris without you know Hector in it or something, you took like the like the beta Tinbot with with uh, Spitfire with Tinbot and like maybe the specialist operative, and then you took uh, um like the uh, I I don't know how you would assemble this, but you could like take something else and then you could like throw throw a, the hacker in there or something like that, right? And then I don't know what you would hide it as. Um, I mean, it'd be funny to hide it as like Shona Carano, right? Yeah. Right. And so you come in there and you're like, "I'm gonna hack your Beta Trooper," and then you get Trinity. That's a thing worth thinking about. Yeah. The thing is, Beta has really strong hackers, so. Yeah, I mean, they're they're with thirteen. This guy's with fourteen. Same BTS. Right. Yeah. So they have they it's have slightly better, and it's you know, ten points cheaper, and it's a surprise. It is a surprise. Which that is, doesn't make a difference. Which is kind of fun, right? So just having it there is. I mean, the tin bottle on the Spitfire kind of gives it away, uh, but not really, right? You can be like, well, I, I, you can, you can easily justify and say like, well, I don't want to get hacked, so I'm gonna make it annoying. You know, this army actually does have an interesting selection of killer hackers to pick from. Yeah. Which is funny because I feel like killer hackers have kind of become less important. But yeah. You've got that Tiangao killer hacker mm-hmm. that can surprise hack someone for the negative three, which is mm-hmm. which is fun. Yep. The there's the Raptor killer hacker, mm-hmm. which is not at all a bad profile. Three points for an upgrade, you know, for an upgrade over the base profile just to be a specialist in general. Yep. And it's a killer hacker, so he can uh cybermask. Does cybermask still go to his peripherals? I can't remember. I don't know. Um then there's the Psychop, right? Solid hacker. Mm-hmm. Just a, a whip thirteen, either regular hacking device or killer hacker. Yeah. Cybermask wouldn't go to the peripherals anymore because they're planted. They're Excuse planted? Me? Yeah, you don't put you don't man traps don't follow you. No, 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 no. Uh, the Dave about that follows around the Raptor. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So right. maybe there, which is, which would be interesting because Scylla lost that trick. Yep. So that's something worth looking up. Yeah, they have the killer hacker and the psychops, so you can throw a killer hacker in any of the sectorals in your army. I don't know if I'd take the regular hacker psychop. It's twenty four points. And, um, oh, it does work. It does. If a player activates a hacking program that grants a modder state to the controller, for example, a cyber mask, that modder state will also be applied to their peripherals. What the hell? They took it away from Scylla. Boo hiss. Okay, well, now you've got heavy infantry Scylla in heavy infantry faster Scylla yep. in Starmada. That of Santiago is a good killer hacker. Yep. Right? Airborne deployment with a marker state. Mm-hmm. And two wounds. That's that's yeah. Well, actually, let's talk about the Santiago because, and mines. huh? And mines. Yeah, yeah. Holy hell, that profile is insane for thirty nine points. Yeah. The down- downside is that if it's, you it's forty five. You're gonna oh, be forty five. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the only downside is if you do cause a wound, you're gonna be frenzy. <laughs> that's kind of okay. Oh, that's funny. I'm kind of fine with that. It's it's usually not a problem. <laughs> yeah. These mind bullets have filled me with rage. If you if you were like in cover, suddenly you're not. I mean, but, yeah, yeah. Combat like a combat jumper, heavy infantry with boarding shotgun discharges and mines is already insane. 
and then you give it a marker state and a killer hacking because as a killer hacking device and it's a specialist like pow 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 like what do you want to do so that's an interesting killer hacker right there like so those are three four interesting killer uh, the psychop is maybe less interesting but the santiago the raptor the tiangao are very interesting killer hackers yeah, the Tiangao is basically interesting because of the surprise factor. The Jammer is fine. It's fine. <laughs> I love how we're like, Jammer, meh. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> use it twice and then what? Yeah. I mean, it's it's fine. I'm, no, I'm never going to use it in an active turn unless I really feel confident about something. But um, it's just reasonable. Uh, you know what that's actually useful for is protecting your bronze. Yes, it is. Well, you can hide it, so you don't know it's coming either. Yeah, you just, this is my, whatever the, the bronze is linked with. Well, just, would you take a Knight of Santiago duo with the bronze? And if so, what would you take? And why? Oh, God, the Knight of Santiago with the bronze? Yeah. Well, it's obvious. It's gonna be I would do bronze, red fury, and okay. a Santiago killer hacker. The 39-point killer hacker. Okay. Like, but now you lose EM grenades, and therefore it's a useless profile. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, like tell me, tell me which, tell me which Knight of Santiago you're taking, and why is it the one with the EM grenades? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, Hello, my name is John. Whichever one has EM grenades is what I'll take, please. Yes. Uh, I don't care what's on the rest of the profile. Yep. Pretty much. You had me at Fizz thirteen EM grenades. I mean that that in and of itself is a very nice addition to the sectoral. Just have like a fast attack piece. You know, on, that's actually like a totally valid standalone attack piece. Right, that's a totally valid other duo. Is the bronze paramedic with the Knight of Santiago specialist Spitfire? Sure, you can take the bronze paramedic. This this is actually a little more appealing to me, honestly. I might take this at some point in the future. <laughs> now that I'm really thinking about it, the bronze paramedic, this Knight of Santiago bronze paramedic duo for 96 points and zero that, swick. Yeah, it's not, it's not even 100 points. But like the the problem with this though is that like like I don't, I don't know if you've experienced this, Isaac, but like I I haven't really been able to fill swick in in Starmada. Yeah, I don't really care though. I at this point, I mean, I'm going for tools. Less, less the uh, Swick. Sure, sure, sure. That's but actually I mean, like, that's interesting point of discussion, though, right? Like this is a where where I feel like vanilla is a very much big guns sectoral. Even though Starmada does feel like a direct action kind of army, it also feels like a uh, more a, a broader tool set. Well, I mean, yeah. there's just the the really good stuff just doesn't cost swick. Like a plasma rifle, zero swick. I don't know how that happened, but it's zero swick. So, <laughs> and, and there's no there's no there's no swick sink either. I can't just like dump it into like double tr bot or something, right? right you only get the, one tr bot, I think. As the combined player here, let me like shh. Don't tell everyone we've been paying zero swick for plasma rifles this whole time. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> So I mean, the other option is you could do this, right? And there's your, there's your core. Yeah, I mean, just four, four cap of missile launchers and a paramedic, because I'm not going to use my swick anywhere else. Kinda. Coming, coming from, from Pano, the I, the there were just options for attack pieces that had swick costs that were that made sense, like. A bullet tier sheep, one swick, it fills in the gaps for your swick. Right. But there's not really that kind of stuff here. And where there is yeah. some of that, I mean, look at all the profiles that have zero swick or, or 0.5 or less. I mean, there's a lot. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, like when I was, well, so when I was playing around with Starmata lists, I was looking at my law keeper, uh, specialist operative with his side bot, being like, I guess I should upgrade him to the Red Fury because yeah. I have all this swick. You don't want to because I... it's a, an amazing fast specialist. I mean, like if you learn yeah. anything from playing my JSA, you want to kill that. Yeah, no. Like 
but I have the I have the swick. I need to use the swick. Yeah, it's weird. I don't get it. Okay, so what do you think on blue coats? Because blue like, coats are fucking hilarious. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> so probably funny. they're probably both my favorite model and favorite unit in all of Star Mata. They're so funny. <laughs> I think they're better as a as a solo unit, to be honest. Okay, tell me, it, it enlighten me. They're they're cheap, and so cheap. they have rights, heavy right suppers, and they have six cents, so you don't need them in that link. You don't. <laughs> but burst three adhesive, right? Like the the only correct option is thirty nine points for a three man Harris of burst three adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Like, and burst two heavy riot stoppers. I'm defending my deployment zone, goddammit. <laughs> Get out of here. The only the only way they can actually hurt you is in with a pistol or in close combat. Yeah. I mean, they're I mean they just do not seem like the type of unit that's there for killing things. They're just really good at protecting your deployment zone. What, what gave it away? <laughs> 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 uh, the almost ability to kill things. Yeah. I mean, you could pay three more points to drop your burst suit heat launcher for an SMG, but yeah, the the way I see it is, um, they're there to help deal with camo and infl- and impersonators. Um, so like as like I I agree with Isaac in that I think they're they're good. Like you take one or two in case you're worried about fides or some like camo thing that's going to be close. Um, or like a, a Kyutan out of Toha or something, uh, and then you can just glue it and deal with it later. Right. right. They they actually, you know, so again, coming from like a combined player perspective where 13 points is the amount of points you pay for a cheerleader yep. that, isn't, that isn't one of your natural six uh, orders that you always take and combined with the um, baggage bot, the arm drone, and the Imatron. Like 13 points is fine, but like a heavy riot stopper corner guard is serious yeah there are a lot of you know a lot of heavy infantry a lot of units that that don't worry about corner guards oftentimes only have like a 50 50 chance of taking a wound from a chain rifle or a flamethrower anyways but then when it's suddenly a a heavy riot stopper you have to think for a second the i think the large teardrop is a significant difference too it's yeah for a huge swath of area with, well, that's uh, just like a chain rifle. The difference is that this one hit can stop a tag. Yeah. Based on a single dice roll, your tag is is turned off or not. I love blue coats. I really hope they do a box of them. I want to see every pose of blue coat just because that model is absolutely ridiculous. It is so cool. <laughs> <sighs> well, awesome. All right, so if I was a new player starting O twelve, what do you think of like I'm already looking at like if you got the Starmada action pack and the O twelve action pack, you'd have a hell of a lot of tools for a pretty good price. I would definitely invest in the the new box that's coming out. It's got the links, the Psycop and Razor. Yeah. Yeah, worth oh, yep. the um, uh, the the booster pack. Uh, the booster booster pack. pack. Thank you for code one. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely worth getting if you're a. Yeah, uh, absolutely agree. And saying so if you're getting defiance, you're already getting a pair of links to Delta, Gamma, and Solid in as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and a couple of, uh, I think a couple of Kappa, and Catherine Cho. Boom. I don't know if the the remotes are as important as some of the other factions, to be honest. Not in Star Mata? Yeah. But probably in vanilla. Yeah. So they have decent availability of any of the remotes. Like they've got not really. I think they get two of the Ford Observer bots, one TR bot, one missile bot one flash wall spot so they don't even get to double up on flash pulses yeah do they have better availability in vanilla they have yeah you get two of each yeah okay so they can take a second flash wall spot mm-hmm. 
is really what matters there, right? Or a second TR bot. And and when uh, Raptors finally drop, just invest. It's definitely important to get. <laughs> yeah, you can take four of them in Star Mod. Yeah. I saw, like, yeah. Can I make a list? Like, I think the problem. Uh, what does that even that look like? Is that they can't coordinate order. So yeah. if they could, that would be a pretty big deal. But you can't. So. Yeah, if they could bring, if they could add their orders back to the pool, that would, that would change my mind about doing that, and I would probably run four Rassiats. Yo, it's not like it matters much in O12 because there's so many Strategos options. That's the other thing that I think is really important to really stress is they have all a really strong, high command um, set of tools. There's just a lot of options for Stratigos, and they have a really cheap, very strong uh, chain of command with Cho. Yep. So it's it's really um, I I think it's really important to to make a plan for how you're going to handle your lieutenant. And uh, how you're going to spin those orders now that you've got them? Um, it makes your group balance different. Like you can you can put more things into group two and feel comfortable with it uh, because you have more orders now available in group one. So I don't do you think. Go ahead. I, I don't think the NCO is as, is a much of a boon, but um, yeah. if you do want to hide a lieutenant somewhere, it's good. If you do end up losing your strategos, it's available. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you uh, do you think they have what it takes to compete in N four? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think that they are. So here's what's going to happen: they're if you're a new player, your skill level against another new player, they're going to feel really strong. I think Pano, um, O twelve, and combined kind of have that feel where they just feel really strong. A little front loaded, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you take a dip as you start to learn more, and your skill level kind of feels like it's dropping because you aren't you aren't as successful because you start seeing that the the, the tools you're bringing to solve problems aren't really as strong as you thought they were. And it's going to take a lot of time and effort to get back up to being skillful again. And I think that they are strong on the other end, but they are not. There, you have to be. A finesse player to make it really work. It's actually yeah. a really interesting uh, thought. Like, I are agree. the armies are the higher tech armies in Infinity the ones that have the, um, I guess, less steep learning curve? Uh, <laughs> well, so we've talked about this before, right? right. So right. a very classic example is you know when we just sort of alluded to is Pano. At the beginning, when you're just learning, you're like, "Holy crap, I can arrow stuff." I'm going to leave everything standing and then you can't do anything because then you're just like, then then a lot of that sort of can turn people off from the game. We're like, wait, I can't get past this TR bot. I can't get past this like double missile launcher link because uh, like they'll just out dice me and then and you get really scared and then uh, you start bringing like bigger and bigger things and finally you, you overcome that, right? And then you're like, I'm just shooting everything off the table uh, and then you get into this kind of weird situation where everybody's like, oh crap, they're always bringing a cutter. I can't stop this. So I'm just going to not leave anything out and then I'm going to respond, like let's say like you, you bought the Ice Storm pack. So the mm -hmm. panel player buys the cutter and the Nomad player is like, well, shit, I can't leave anything out now. This is just dumb. I'm going to have to start playing a different game. Then they buy, then like, you know, the, the, their, their war core in the area is like, hey, buddy, you should buy this Moran. And they're like, well, this Moran looks like potato. And like, don't worry, it's really good. It doesn't matter what it looks like because buy the damn thing. <laughs> and then they buy it, they put it on the table, like, oh my God, now I'm winning again. And the panel player is like, what do I do? I can't stop this. Right. Yeah. And then it's really right. hard as a panel player to solve that problem because the, the tool you had before and you're so comfortable and familiar with is I have big gun. I shoot you full of bullets. You are now dead. I win the game. Uh, but you can't do that when they're not exposing anything for you to shoot. Um, and O12 and especially Star Mata is definitely like that. Right. There's not a lot of stuff that isn't apply gun to face. Um, right. But there's a lot of tools here. That you can do some pretty clever things, like right, we just talked about the Raptor. You can cyber mask past some mines and get through the midfield, right? Then you're in their deployment zone with a flamethrower and uh, a good a good gunfighting BS4 chassis, which will get work done. Um, so, but it, it takes it takes some some uh, 
not just finesse, but experience to evaluate that, right? So like when we look at the Raptor, we like the first thing that we look at is like, okay, here is a here's a here's a a strong gunfighting specialist that can peace trade without actually losing anything by throwing the David bot under the bus, right? And yeah. other people will be like, oh well, the only the only thing I should take is the is the Raptor Spitfire because it's got the biggest gun. Who doesn't want a BS14 Spitfire? Um, but you know, when you're hunting down Gulam, the multi rifle is just fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a great way of looking at this is the bronze looks like a very attractive profile to a new player. Yeah. And Shut up. I think it looks great, too. <laughs> it is good, but we also see the holes in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like the beta trooper, you look at the, the, the profiles with submachine guns, and people are like, why would I want to bring a submachine gun on a guy? And, I mean... We we both know that that's a very strong profile that can do a lot of work and mm-hmm. often is going to take back uh, much more control and do a lot more things than its points suggest it's it's doing or even its gun suggests it's going to be doing. But I mean that comes with experience, but also realizing that uh, some things that don't look powerful on the surface have a toolkit that allow you to do. A lot of uh, interesting problem solving that allow you to sidestep and bypass the the in your face kind of option. And I think that that's the the real tough part about getting through that mid middle um, skill level is learning that a lot of uh, infinity is not direct engagement. It's playing the mission and positioning for a strong reactive turn so that you don't get unfavorable exchanges. Mm-hmm. And that's that's something that's gonna take a lot of work, time and effort. And when you when you are in an army that doesn't have a lot of those things like like nomads is great for transitioning because there's just so many options that let you play and plug and place things at similar price points to be able to find tools that work well for you and experiment and mm-hmm. get past that phase. Whereas like Pano and um, uh, Starmata and I guess to some degree um, armies like uh, uh, Invincible Army, where you, you have to uh, take take that, that in your face approach and use that as a um, as a strength, but use it as a pressure tool so that you can actually do the things on the side like a, an experienced player does. And that, that takes a lot of restraint and a lot of mess. And if you lose those pieces, then you have to learn how to recover. And if you bring just a gun, that's going to have a really, really hard time pushing a button. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that's the other thing, right? Like... I think one of the big things that separates a, a completely new player from like a, somebody who's reached like the mid mid level of their experience and, de- and development as an infinity player is like they start looking at profiles that seem unoptimized, right? You're just like, oh, I'm taking this like weird gun that has a specialist profile, but like it doesn't shoot as good as I want, so maybe I won't take that. And then they start doing things like you know maybe they'll take a, a like. They 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 they're looking for things that do one thing and do it well, right? So they'll take a Kriza and a Zero, right? And that that handles all the things you could possibly want: shooting and button pushing. And they're both like good at that, but they won't consider things like uh, a Bandit, right? Mm-hmm. Which right, is a right. which is a very finesse tool which you have to learn to use very carefully because it has a lot of uh, ways of removing pieces and it can also push buttons depending on profile you take. Uh, but it is not a, a immediate like, oh, I know what to do with this. People look at it yeah. like, oh, it's really cool, but it's weird and I don't like it and it doesn't give me an order. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so there's definitely a lot of stuff like that in um, in uh, in Starmata too. Like the, the Crusher is a great example, right? It doesn't have a marker state. Uh, it's very vulnerable to getting alpha striked off the table. So you have to plan for that, right? Just like Isaac was saying, like you have to know how to get into favorable exchanges on your reactive turn, right? And that may be... Uh, that crusher is going to die 100% guarantees is going to dedicate the resources to get rid of it. But you have to make it painful to do, right? So they had to to spend five orders to get into a position where they can take it out. And that's good, right? That is worth it then. Yeah, it's... 
You know, it, it's funny because it's easy to I feel like it's easy to look at Starco and or Starco, uh Starmada and O12 and think of them as kind of dull. You know, at, at first glance, like it's like, ooh, riot stoppers. And then it's kind of a lot of stuff that you're familiar with. Mm. But but on the table, you know, especially after our game, where you really surprised me with, with vanilla O12's board presence. Mm-hmm. Like that caught me way off guard. You know. Uh, I've been looking at Starmata so much, and Starmata's board presence is not good. Um, but man, like vanilla can really, you can really tailor a list to kind of fit your play style. You know, this, it was an army that was, that was 012, but it felt like I was playing as nomads. Well, I mean, that's because I turned everything into nomads. <laughs> right? Tricks on tricks on tricks. Yeah. <laughs> that's the secret. Yeah, that's Every the secret. Nomad. <laughs> and now you can nine have KHD so I can play JSA like nomads. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it'll be fun. But think, overall hmm? I think I really want to like Starmada as a as a sectorial, but I don't know if it it fits my play style in the end. Mm-hmm. I think that they're fun, but you have to go in expecting a certain type of playstyle. So I think yeah. that a lot of players may actually graduate out of it. And and maybe they'll start with Starmata, but they'll probably go to O twelve vanilla. I agree. Yeah. I think I think they're definitely uh they demand some careful study. I think they're they're quite strong and there's definitely some mission sets that they excel at, like the quadrant control one. I felt pretty confident in that list. Um but I did not feel confident in my ability to execute a plan for mind wipe with uh with Starmata. It just didn't feel consistent enough uh and and well not only did it not feel consistent enough i just didn't feel like i had enough to blunt a, a steel phalanx assault in starmata yeah like at that point i'm just relying on getting lucky with dice rolls mm-hmm. um yeah that, that's a really good observation though i mean i was going to make a, a comparison to forco because they kind of feel like clunky and weird in the same way like forco doesn't have a huge amount of board presence they can try to approximate it but you can't right. really trade a zero to like take out something that's coming your way because you really needed that zero to do something yeah um so you're also forced to build the defensive link in forco and i think you're kind of uh forced to build a defensive link in in starmata if you want to do that right like forco i think you're forced to starmata you can kind of avoid it by just like trying to set up nested arrow things like once they cross the, the 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 center line but i don't know it's tough like um i you you should assume if you're going to go with the defensive link yeah i think it's a really good idea to consider it a lost cause and use it as a speed bump because mm-hmm. it's going to help you get out of your deployment zone yeah and if you if you just say like okay i'm going to plan for orders that are not that those five then and feel like you're investing enough of your um list into the other things uh, i think it can be really strong because once you leave the deployment zone and once that defensive line has done what it's supposed to do um if they get into midfield i think uh starco is pretty rough to deal with starmata sorry starmata yeah. i mean <laughs> you done the same thing yeah <laughs> i ruined you I, 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 yeah, that, that's like you did that in your list, right? You, you had the five, five man capital link, and then you know you survived, even though most of it was dead by the end of the game. Yep, my my whole goal was that I'm going to just use these as a, uh, as a way of of causing a speed bump and slowing things down so they can't approach, and then ignore them, let them just stay there the rest of the game, and use all my other pieces to actually do things. Mm-hmm. And that way, it felt like I was playing a limited insertion type list, where um, I had my strong pieces. I was—I mean, I didn't have a Harris, but I mean, I could have easily not had a Harris, and I felt comfortable. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think Star um, Starmada is I me. Mean, one of those armies that you play a sectoral that you play like a vanilla. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so either. Right, not at all. I don't well, think they do have high AVA Raptor squads. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, <laughs> and that and that Knight of Santiago, mm-hmm. and it's Young Gao. Ooh, watch yourself, yep. watch yourself. That's it right there. That's the key. But so, 
I think it's just an, the nature of being such a small army to begin with. Yeah. Because it is a new ar- it's a new army. It's a new sectoral. It's a new sectoral within a new army. So like there's just a really lit, finite number of units to give better availability towards. So it really is going to hinge heavily on those fire teams. And kind of as Isaac says, like as players grow out of fire teams, yes, I'm saying that challenge all of you guys. If it's a crutch, uh, play vanilla. Yep. You know, people are going to eventually grow out of Star Starmada uh, and play vanilla. And I think units like the serious team are really going to kind of like push people quickly that direction. Yeah. And razors. Oh, I love yep. it. Razors. <laughs> links. Yep. They'll be like, I want plasma. I want more plasma. Yeah. Give me more plasma. I'll take all the plasma, please. <laughs> I, should play a com- I think you can play a combined list of all plasma, right? That's probably a thing you could do. Well, probably. plasma unidrons, plasma TR bot. Yeah. You can get, there is a, there's a, a legate profile with plasma. Really? There's the plasma. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's just a plasma carbine. There's Still. the overdrawn with plasma snipers. All right, all right, hang on. Sorry. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll do this on my own time. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, uh, I think, I think we're talking about combined army. I think it's safe to, to roll the conversation down and, uh, Thank everyone for joining us. Well, you've wasted another perfectly good evening listening to Late Night War Games. So, John, why don't you uh, take it away? Yep. So, just a reminder, send us your Airborne Deployment games uh, by the end of the month, and you can win some cool prizes from Roman Academy. I'll be launching a new mission soon for December. Um, You can also uh, paint something up and send it in for uh, the painting contest at the end of the year. And that is a stealth model. Any stealth model will work. All the rules are on bromenacademy.com. If you like what you see here, you can find us on Twitch at 8.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. Uh, we do the show. We also have a... Um, a uh... Oh, you're still playing the music, Adam, by the way. Uh, so uh, we have a show on Sundays, which is uh, our local hero i guess eric uh faces off against all challengers so next sunday is clay lundy aka red baron who is going to be facing eric in mind wipe i don't know what they're playing yet because they haven't told me uh, but that's happening um and uh so that's on sundays and, and then you can find all of that on youtube on our dice abide channel too uh, and then we record this show to podcast so you can listen in the car uh and enjoy us there in your ear holes so directly in the ear hole yep and of course let's give a special thanks to our sponsors uh especially brutal cities brutal cities purveyor of fine mdf terrain making your cities brutal since 2020 (laughs) yeah no he makes amazing terrain he really Um, does if you haven't seen his stuff check it out i know he's doing some specials for black friday so be sure to take advantage of it. I believe it includes cheaper shipping to the U.S., which is a big deal considering it's an Australian-based company. And shipping, uh, believe it or not, shipping across the Pacific Ocean is not cheap. So, yeah, be sure to check them out. And then, of course, uh, catch us on Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere you have listened to podcasts. We're in, I think, just about all the apps. Yep. If you enjoy the show, please take a moment to give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Follow us on Twitch and YouTube. Um, give us all of the yeah the the five stars the high fives the thumbs up the, the likes the subscribes the little cowbell icon whatever thing it is that you have to click on the platform that you are enjoying our content on all of that makes me feel good and gives me a better ego so <laughs> let's let's continue to enlarge the size of my ego and make me feel really good about the show that John and I put on Yay. so all um, of that will inspire me to give you better content. Yep. So it's only uphill, or it's only downhill. It's only better from here. It's on a hill that we might die on. on. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're clear. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, is there anything you'd like to plug? No. No. Go be safe. Wear yeah. Mask. yeah. Be safe. Do that thing. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, of course, to all of our patrons. Next month we'll be doing a drawing that's coming up pretty soon. Um, yep. Yeah. So happy early Thanksgiving to all of our U.S. listeners. And uh, stay safe out there. Take care, guys. All right. Have a good night. Good night.